chat are you excited for another exciting episode of rock around oh, oh, yeah. it's, yeah. it's time to dine oh that's a bad voice out oh jesus uh, Zorin, your vibrato was what? excellent that's Thank how you. you get tinnitus oh contains coconut water i've already got tinnitus I'm giving it that's to you, you now. That's how you get to, that. That's how you get tinnitus. Hi, oh. everybody! Welcome to another exciting episode of Rock Grind. I wanna, I wanna throw you guys online. Can can we do intros like at lightning speed? Can we yeah. do that? Bad. Okay, wow. let's let's see how fast you guys are. First up, Valley by Odoroshi. Hi. Uh, hi, I'm Odoroshi. I'm playing Valley, the uh, self swashbuckler. I'm in your house. Uh, next. Okay. That's me, I'm Hokey Pro. I'm playing the Kanrasu Cleric Rahua, and I'm in your walls, do not forget. Arundel. Arundel, I'm playing as Baldric the Alchemist, and I write for Emperor TTS. Also, did you know, uh... Speaker. Speaker. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm called GM High. You can find me on the socials. I'm called GM High. I'm going to GM for you. I'm a GM on GM. I'll call GM. All right. Hey. I think we got everybody, right? Good. We didn't forget somebody. Welcome to the Dawn of War tutorial. Nah. By following this tutorial. Nah. Nah. <laughs> and reading the messages. Nah. Commander. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and hi, everybody. Suitable welcome back fast. to. Welcome back to Narrow Declarations Rock Grind. I think it's episode 10. Congratulations, everybody. We made it this far. Well, you guys yeah. are supporting us and all the stuff. So first, I'd like to say a huge thank you. Thank you, everybody who comes over on Twitch to watch us live. So, you know, this is live. I can read you guys there in the chat and everything, like Terminus and Lodi and Geis and everything else. We don't, do, walls. we don't do pre-recorded. We're, we're all actually live. We all see you in your house currently live on stream. Exactly. And there goes the car. The GoPro on Odo yeah, There goes the car. <laughs> the car. <laughs> Space. And, uh... And yeah, so thank you guys so much for supporting us by heading over to our Twitch streams. You can always find at twitch.tv forward slash someone the bear. Also supporting us over on Patreon. Uh, and you might want to consider Patreon if you like messing us up. Because uh, there have been some changes. <laughs> First thing, you might notice that there is a little bar uh, that's right above Thurston's head. That is our villain bar. We might have to make some adjustments yes. to the overlay to kind of make that work just a little bit more. But um yeah, so what we kind of do on the show is we do a hero point system, which hero point system is kind of native for Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which is the system that we play on. Uh, but now we've kind of adjusted a little bit. First off, if you are a Patreon supporter on the antagonist tier, uh, you actually can submit complications to be made uh, when we roll a natural one. So now if you roll a natural one, similar to what we did with the previous show, Warhams, uh, whenever we critically fail, your result may be used. You basically hop, hop in there, throw in all your ideas into the pool. We then pull them all together, and then we try to uh, basically use them whenever uh, the situation arises for it. So you guys have contributed to a pool. So if you are a Patreon supporter at Patreon or patreon.com forward slash uh, narrative declaration, you can help us there. Additionally, with all of that, we've also added in the villain point system. So what that means is that every time you guys donate bits to us, which if you do like uh, the hashtag, the character name, and then your bit donation amount. Um, say for example, you gave me or Orin 100 bits. The 30% of that total also fills up Thurston's bar. So every time you help us, you help Thurston out just a <laughs> bit more with his stuff. So as much as, as much as the hero points can help us and ruin us sometimes, uh, we just added just a bit more danger to the adventure now now that some of us have uh yeah and additionally you could also uh do bits directly to thurston by doing uh i think it's hashtag gm is what we got i'm gonna triple check that because sometimes it's a bit yeah hashtag that's what stream GM. elements is saying yeah yeah i'm just double making sure the actual program side of it says that but yeah that's that's the major announcement on that so 
if you do a if you donate bits and do hashtag GM uh, a lot of donation. Oh my uh, god! Uh, and someone oh. already filled it up. So. Oh, you are a nut job. <laughs> <laughs> Holy wow. shit! And it takes it takes two thousand five hundred bits to. Uh, <laughs> to get there. So oh, already Thurston is By the is way, full. someone someone just added me saying, "We love Thurston, but can Erndil DM this session?" <laughs> Jesus! Wow! Wow! wow. Um, actually, GM, I think you will find that I am you. <laughs> Alright, Thurston, no, you'll be playing Baldur for fortune. Yeah, someone hurled ten thousand yeah. fucking bits at you. Oh my God! Good Lord. All right. Yeah, thank you. All right, Thurston. I guess you've been given all the power. We haven't even started. <laughs> anyway, Thurston's over here with a special thing that he can use to screw us over. I can't. I give him a senzu bean. It's good. <laughs> listen, kid. Listen, kid. I'm just coming in prepared. <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's basically the adjustments that we've made. Just so you guys who uh, do come into the stream and do support us there, because we are a live show and do greatly appreciate people rooting us on. Your energy in chat definitely kind of translate over to us. We love seeing everyone's stuff. Uh, we just want to add just a little bit more. And also with Patreon supporters helping us out in that case as well. Just make the game just that much more chaotic and fun. So uh, thank you uh, to all of our supporters. And also thank you everybody for watching the show so far. We greatly appreciate it. It's been a really, really fun road so far. And hope we can have many more adventures with you all. But with that, interesting stuff happened last episode. So Thurston. Yeah. What adventure do you have for us today? Well, last time, our destined band of chuckle fucks continued their battle against the forces of the Tyrant's Guilds in the streets of the Ponce Pilaster District, battling against the remaining outriders as well as conjured undead beings. The party slowly began to turn the tide against the oncoming threat. Then the chainsaw car showed up. Directed by a high-ranking member of the Tyrant's Guild, as played by Erndel, as well as a mysterious man of smug, noble demeanor, the car tore through the streets. It first rampages, or rampaged down the street and murdered the eccentric Dr. Krim, rendering her into, as I have it here, bloody viscera and bone chunks, which it spewed across the streets. Yes. I don't get that too attached. Uh, many of the party members attempted to flee, though Vali, having a chance to escape, decided to instead take a, a shot with her pistol at the smug nobleman atop the chainsaw car, only to be brought low by a chain glaive, which gave an opening for Prince du Shelf to reveal his true colors and pilfer from his former captain. Oren, seeing this, attempts to save Vali by dashing across the rooftops in a heroic move to, to save his companion, only to fall at the timely intervention of an avian fey creature, uh, which sent our Strix druid tumbling back into the alley. And through a series of additional unfortunate events, Vali is brought back to consciousness and then goes to save a wounded Orin, while Tannhauser rushes to provide distraction for his friends to allow them to escape. However, the an untimely use of a narrative de declaration by one all caps bold underline Erndil causes the chainsaw car to move in reverse, crushing both Vali and Oren. The remaining party members flee the scene with the chainsaw car continuing on its hunt through the district. Baldric, Crunch, and Grandma Sweet make their way uh, away from the area towards Baldric's house. Meanwhile, Rahua returns and finds the remains of everyone but Vali and Oren, eventually discovering a scroll case with the seal of the Tyrant's Guild. At this point, Tannhauser and Duhakis, the gargoyle scholar, also show up. And finally, Vali and Oren wake up somewhere familiar, far under the city of Outset. But as we get back to uh, to, to to our game and we come to today's session, um, I want uh, you know since chat has been asking for it. Um, 
Uh, GM Erndil, would you kindly paint the scene of what the interior of Baldric's home looks like and, and what is going on now that Baldric and, comp- and and his two two companions, Crotch and Grandma Sweet, have, have entered into your homestead? Oh, the, yeah, I don't, I don't recall taking Grandma Sweet with me. So what are you doing with Grandma Sweet? Because Crunch had Grandma Sweet. Like, were you just leaving her on the side of the road? What are you Crunch, doing? Crunch lives next door, brother. That's true. He does. He does. Are you Are you just going into your house by yourself, closing the door? Crunch is on his own. Okay, so here's the scene. Crunch yes. is following behind is following behind Baldrick. Baldrick is moving very quickly, but has since downgraded to a white person power walk. Okay. Good. And is very deftly moving through the alleyways and whatnot to try and lose as much of a tail as he possibly can so they don't come back to his house. Ranch is keeping up, only just keeping Grandma Sweet in close close coordination. Finally, they get back to their homes. Baldrick ascends his stairs, and Crunch can say something to him if you'd like. Oh, uh, uh, clang, 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 the plate, the plates jingling. Uh, 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 Mr. Baldrick, everything has gone uh, so, so sideways. It's, it's like, it's like an upturned anvil on the streets here. There's, there's fires and, and streaming and shouting. And, 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 I, I, I think some of your friends didn't make it. What are yes, you I am, I am well aware. Uh, oh, all right. So the plan now that the guild is going mad on the streets. They've actually deployed a full-ass Iron Baron onto the streets. The plan is get get indoors. Of course. And stay there. All right. All right. Of course, of course, of course. I'll I'll take this this fine maiden. Ah, thank you. I'll take this fine maiden into into my domicile. But but we we should probably begin begin barricading and preparing. I could. uh, I have some tools downstairs with which I could utilize to to break down the the the, the wall between our two homes to make it. Baldric Baldric immediately holds up a finger. Uh, uh, No. Because oh, as soon as you start making noise, they'll investigate. Oh, oh, that's that's. You bad. need to keep quiet. All right, we can, we can. I can go down into into the, the basement level. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you're, you're correct. Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Yes, I'll, I'll take, as I said, the, the maiden, and I, I shall, shall await you in our allies' post haste. <laughs> Bulger goes inside and slams his door. <laughs> and like Crouch looks, I, I thought we weren't supposed to make noise, but all I go goes in, like like dutifully unlocks his door, like leads the leads Grandma Sweet in. Um, the 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 scene immediately cuts into Baldric's home. Baldric, uh, you want to give like another quick description of your of your home as you enter in, and then tell us exactly what you're doing. All right, the interior of Baldric's home is laid out, at least on this floor, as two portions. The front portion is a living room where a couple of dilapidated and roughly hewn together sofas sit as well as a resting chair and a table, a short one made of scrap wood. Uh, Between that is a partition that separates it from the kitchen area. Uh, There is a door to the right in the kitchen area that has been heavily sealed off and is very heavily barricaded uh, and only Baldrick can get in there. And there is a set of stairs leading up to his bedroom. Baldrick? Uh... He is going to take a look around. He's going to flip. He's going to look very briefly through his boarded up windows, through the cracks in them. And he is going to he's going to get some food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You 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 head to to your to your kitchen where where your your various uh, you know provisions are. Uh, I assume you you have things on hand, whether it be things you want to cook or things you want to just just consume yourself. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's a lot on hand. Erndil. He's he's just gonna eat some dried food. He doesn't have the stomach for this right now because uh, a couple guys who had kind of thrown in their lot with him just kind of got mowed down, and now he is thoroughly expecting the most irate of them to come beating at his door any minute now. And it's not the tree. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, speaking of the tree, I think we're going to uh, to cut to Tannhauser, Rahua, and Duhakis, who are now making their way down the streets. Um, I believe where we last left off, Rahua and Tannhauser, you were going to make your way back to Baldrick's house. Is that correct? Yes, I think so. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. we uh, we wanted to gather up uh, the uh, our good friend. Oh God, I completely forgot her name because I'm more... Duhakis, Duhakis. Right there. Duhakis. That's right. Right there. <laughs> this has been quite a quite a journey. As you're like walking through these alleys with this gargoyle scholar who's still like clutching onto a tome with her as she's like following. Um, with Rahu, I assume you're kind of like leading the way. Yeah, Rahu will be leading the pack, just kind of looking out for his friends, trying to make sure nobody is going to be waiting around the corner. <laughs> Heaven forbid that the Iron Baron is somewhere silently stalking them. <laughs> It's, 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 it's chaotic here. They've never done, done anything quite as drastic as this. Look into the motivation later. Right now, Professor Duhakis. Uh, yes, uh, that, that, uh, that, I'm not quite a prof- Well, I, I, I could have been. I mean, well, you, well, yes? Adjunct Professor Duhakis. Very good. <laughs> You made mention that you were surprised we had died. There were no signs of either body at the scene where they perished. They were either taken prisoner or something happened to them. Do you have the slightest inclination as to what that might have been? There are a few options that have come to mind. Um, you know, one, they, they could have been so thoroughly minched by that horrible, horrible monstrosity that there was simply nothing left for us to identify. No, if Orin once under the wheels, there would be feathers everywhere. I've but, seen what that kind of machine can do. But, uh, the, other, the other option is that it's consumed them body and soul, which would leave nothing left. I hear those things operate based off of soul power. Um... Tannhauser, do you have any, you, like, you have Arcana, right? Yeah, give me uh, Arcana. I have something even better. What do you got? Tannhauser has a crafting specialty. Oh, yeah, fuck yeah. Give, he is give, me, well give me crafting. First. Yeah, he has a specialty if I can fucking find it. I uh, believe has, in you. He has a specialty, and I believe uh, ship and vehicle building. Ooh, that would, uh, that would absolutely make sense. Yeah, yeah, that seems uh, pretty useful. All right, we got a 21. Okay, so a 21 is, is like enough for you to know that whilst the Iron Barons, sometimes known as the Chainsaw Cars, uh, do possess like a malign intellect of, of some, despite being mindless, there's some kind of just malign essence in them. Um, despite that, uh, that there's no like recorded uh, situations where they would like consume a person's soul. They're, they're just like awful, awful blending machines. Tuhakis has no idea what she is talking about with machine, like, like, machine stuff. That is not how Iron Barons function. What? what? Oh. Please. What? Please uh, tell me that they are still out there, Anhauser. You, you know these monstrosities, correct? I don't know the specific ones used in outset. The, the other the other option is, well, if you, if you all did die, you could have been sponsored. Sponsored. Yes, uh, it, it's it, it's it's a it's a divine intervention where where a greater power tends to um, look at you and um, decide you're worthy and um, give you give give you give you sponsorship. Like the, that way, if if you were to be taken off of this this mortal coil, they would. Um, there have been recorded um, cases of uh, bringing bringing you back. And you expected this of us. Uh, well, well um, I, 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 it was why I asked if you if you died. I mean, it's, 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 it's typically important to these kinds of things. You mean to say that some higher inscrutable power can simply stay the scythe of death coming down on any living creature? That the natural oh. order of things to pass from life into death is, is possible to be interrupted? Yeah, 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 oh yeah, oh yes, there, there are all sorts of, all sorts of higher powers that can, can stop your, your essence from returning to the fundamental battlefield. They can, they can, they can restore you, even give you corporeality and bodies again. Tannhauser, they, 
Yes. We have to return to the pit. The pit? Why? It... Wait, I, I think I see where you're going with this. Yes, a brush with the divine. If they're alive, they may well be there. And if they aren't, we should assume they've been captured somehow. If anything were to save our friends from a horrible, horrible fate, it would be that encounter with Beyond that you and I had, staring into that eternal flame. I think we should. Yes, I, I agree. We should return to the pit. Maybe our friends have have you, been saved after you want, all. You, you want to run through all of this? Going cut to like screaming in the background. You, you can hear more of the, the, the low rumble of engines far off. Well, you maybe we it. shouldn't run through all of this right now, but I don't know. Tannhauser, should we find Baldric first? Or is time of the essence, you think? Is there any, um... They're like, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna ask to do something really dumb. <laughs> no! <laughs> start the, start the game off! There's no way you'd do Did that. I, uh... You have two hero points. There's options for a narrative declaration, Can I, can too, I make a know? narrative declaration that states that, um... Perhaps uh, some makeshift <laughs> building has been opened up by an un scrupulous some repair shop with part of the wall gestured out by some poorly piloted iron baron at some point during this chaos hey what is your goal with this i want to build something like i love i love that what you're using your narrative <laughs> declaration for is to give you the parts to do something you're not willing to tell me that's always the best type of situation yeah. for me to be in. mark him down the fucking hero point and let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> look at that conveniently collapsed building right there oh, we could use it for shelter no what all revolutions begin with one single thing and i reach into the repa uh, repair shop and i pull out the wheel and i'd like to make a crafting check to make a three-seater bicycle <laughs> <laughs> you know what <laughs> sure <laughs> Sure. Hunter, I don't think I understand where you're going with this. That that will not take us where we need to go. How does it, this relate to the revolution? I am confused. This is not related. It's because wheels revolve. I'm partly oh. made of stone and he's made of wood. This seems like a great idea. Yes, you'll be counterbalances. I'll be in the middle. If you're roll shit, I want one of the wheels to be square. <laughs> no, no, no. no. No, better than that. Make it an make it an oh, oval. So make it an oval so that way it's always uphill. <laughs> I want you to have to like take one of your servo. I want you one of your servo and you just have to be like the like a the motor for the bike. And you have to like, but you still have to like get up and push your bike when you're going uphill. <laughs> Can he craft a? How long does it take him to craft a bike with a twenty-three? I, okay, with a twenty-three, it's like it's like like twenty minutes of like grabbing things and parts. And like Duhakis is kind of like shuffled off to beside Rahua, like like looks at like into your eye. Rahua kind of like does the the lean over sort of effect. Um, is he like this or not? I mean, sometimes for the brief time that I've known him, he's always fairly. Looking at him, just furiously grunting, making this horrible, possible parts bike. off like a way. My creation, give my creation torque. Eccentric would be the word the polite company uses, from what I'm told. But I believe the common people of this city say stupid. Oh, I see. Okay. He's very. He's very ingenious with what he makes. I, I trust him to an extent, I suppose. Uh, right, right, right. But, uh, okay, I just wanted to, to make sure, because 
you, you know, and she, just, she looks over at Tannhauser, like, grabbing more things. <laughs> uh, very, 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 very good. And, like, as, as you're doing this, Tannhauser, one thing you're you're noticing um, as you're, like, like, grabbing these parts from this destroyed section of building is, like, underneath you, you're kind of on, like, this slight hill at the base of this destroyed building. Uh, which you assumed originally to just be parts. But as you're digging in, you can see that there is a blank humanoid face coming out of the stone, um, like staring up towards what would be the sky, though it's like obfuscated by additional buildings above you and, 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 and like various sort of wooden walkways and whatnot that are piled on top of one another in this, this section of the district. But what you're seeing is, yeah, there's this just blank humanoid face that's been carved into the stone looking up, which you know is one of the things that you see in Outset quite a bit. These sort of um, blank, like, like chill blank looking faces, uh, similar to what we have for those of you who are in like the, the stream of the video, like kind of like on the sides of our uh, overlay here. Just like imagine one of these, but it's about three feet uh, of stone and it's just staring up blankly. That's awesome. Does it like indicate anything or is it just like a cool detail? It's it's a cool detail, and it's one of those things that is just very unnerving about this city, is that, like, these faces are built in the most random of places. No one really knows why they're, they're like, built into all of these random places. Uh, and it's really hard to find out when people actually have built them intentionally or when they just show up. I tell you what, Rue. Uh, these faces can't be good for the shop's feng shui. I agree. These faces, I don't know, they inspire something of fear in me. These faces of the evil. Yes, these are the faces of oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Well, oh. we, should, we should enjoy the safety of this shop while we can. This peace is what all true warriors strive for. So 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 where are we going? You're 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 building the bike, but where where are we ending up Sorry. going? What? Uh, is the bike finished? <laughs> Against my better judgment, <laughs> yes. All right. As it's finished, there's one last thing that needs to be done. Rua. Oh, okay. Yes. You have been one of my closest comrades in this short-lived revolutionary expedition. I will give you the honors of making this bicycle truly revolutionary. I hand him a spray can of red paint. <laughs> I need another fucking hero point for that. You don't just, you don't just get to. You don't just get spray. What paint do you mean spray free. paint? Oh, yeah. No, that doesn't exist. You fucker, get a get a bucket of paint. Right, a like bucket a normal of person. paint. A bucket of paint. Uh, yes, yeah, there is a bucket of paint. Bastard. <laughs> I've marked you down. Oh, you bastard, give it back! Good. Fine, then it, right, it is spray paint. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> All right, you, you hand the, the coloring implement off to Rahua. Oh. Do I... Rahua starts slathering on his chest. <laughs> not no, you're not supposed to paint bicycles. He's never seen a bicycle before. Well, I, am I, am, I? Am I a hot rod now? No. Am I one of those hot rods? Am I going to go quick? Uh, I think if you let that seep into your skin, you might become a weeping willow. You're supposed to put it on the bike. Oh. Okay. Rahu <laughs> just dumps the pot of paint onto the bike. <laughs> I give him a Just thumbs a up. big glop of tox uh, undoubtedly toxic red paint. Um, okay. I guess, how long does it take for that to dry? We don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> Doc is like, looks around. I'll take this piece of cardboard and put it down. Wait, like cardboard? Just We're, what setting are we in? You nerdy yeah, GM, GM, fucking GM, cardboard. Please spend, please yeah, spend, you spend, spend a hero a point. point for that, GM? Yeah. All of you. 
<laughs> we have gone nowhere. I, I tried to set up a mood and we immediately destroyed it. You're, we're trying oh, to go yeah, somewhere, well, but we have to get on the bike to move. Yeah, all uh. I was asking was where are we going? And fucking speaker's like, I'm going to invent a bicycle in spray cat. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that, now that speak, sorry, Tannhausen. <laughs> As yeah, that speaker is done. <laughs> yes, I, I, I'm in the shop, just on the ceiling. Um, I'm, I'm hanging out with Brumblow. I'm um, melting down. Now, <laughs> oh, no. Now that we've created this this horrible thing and destroyed all tension, I'm going to put the finishing touches, the little bike horn, and I think Ted Hauser will turn to the others. Excellent. Now... We ride. The sinkhole. I I should have mentioned that we're riding there. Where is Tanhauser on the bike, speaker? Um, Tanhauser will go in the middle because he assumes that Rahua and Duhakis are heavier than him. Rahua is going to go to the back of the bicycle, and following in Tanhauser's lead, will begin to straddle the bike, and then just come crashing down on the back. I... Okay. Um, and uh, with that, we, uh, we, we cut to, to another, to another uh, scene. We cut to <laughs> the deep depths of, of the dark, the dark temple, the lights flickering around as Oren and Vali have woken together in this pool uh, at the at the like lower level of this, or deep within the sinkhole, I should say, um, having been there previously. Oh, the tonal whiplash here! Yeah, I was about to say it's hee hee ha ha. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we're still in the um in the pool, correct? Yeah, yeah, like, as, I assume it's, or... it's, like, exactly where we cut off. You, you've basically, like, looked at each other, seen each other uh, in in the same room. Your last, like, memory was the the rear of the chainsaw car rapidly while approaching towards you. Um, that's like you, you faded from consciousness. Um, in your case, Vali, you, you, you remember feeling something sharp in your side as someone had taken advantage of a situation and maybe stabbed you. While you were uh, slipping out of consciousness. I wonder who that was. Yeah, I'm going to uh, to lean back, uh, kind of checking to make sure Oren is all there, and then checking to make sure myself is all still here. Yeah, do you want to give me a perception check? Sure. Sweet. I like perception. It's a fun skill. Yay. Tells me what you can see, which currently not is not much. With the two. I, I got a ten. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Volley, you're like, you're 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 really shaken up. You're you're trying to look around. Like Oren looks like Oren. Uh, this this temple looks like the temple you were in before. Okay, uh, Oren, how do you feel? Are you all right? You kind of feel Oren's hands uh, gripping like the side of your arms, and you see you see like it's like nearly like a death grip, and you see that he's uh, he definitely is the definition of not fucking okay right now. He's and, and where he's grabbing you, know, you, it's cold. It's it's like it's somewhat cold to the touch. Like his. His wings are drooped down, like his hood's like just cascaded over him. He's just shivering and everything. Buddy, I'm gonna reach under his reach under his uh, hood and kind of like put a hand on his shoulder and just. Warren, hey. Well, I'm not exactly sure what happened here, but we gotta keep moving forward, right? There are no leaves. What? Supposed to be leaves. I'm gonna it's rustle to... his hair a little bit. Supposed to be with leaves and wind and. Hey, hey. I don't think 
think that we're dead? I mean, if this is hell, uh, it's a little cold. Right? You see it too? See what? When you go, there's supposed to be leaves. All I saw was... It's like a desert made of ash. Yeah. And there are hordes of people just running and... It's just giant creatures. Just eating them. I don't want to We both saw that. Hmm? What was that? Uh, did, did we both see that? Nope. Oh, just Oren. Yeah. Yep, just Oren, I guess. No. No, I didn't see anything like that, buddy. I don't want to go back. You don't have to. Listen. I'm gonna grab him by the shoulders. Yep. We're in this together, right? That's what a crew does. Mm -hmm. That's why... That's why we make crews, because we can't do this kind of thing alone. Volley, you feel something moving, like, almost like suction slithering across your left arm. Yeah! It goes, like, off of your left uh, hand onto the shoulder, and you hear... Salab talk, help, and patting Oren's face. As the tiny homunculi has climbed out of your your inventory and has gone back to Oren's shoulder. Bastard. Oh, see? Even Glebtalk wants to help. Oren will take, um... Who kind of swing Glebtalk around. Glebtalk. And the cat, I'm like, okay, Glebtalk. 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 Glub talk. Where, where Krim, Glub talk. Where Krim? Oh. I don't know, Glub talk. I don't know. I guess. Glub talk. Is it just us? Yeah. Oren will also uh, start looking around. To yeah, see you want to give me a perception check? Yeah, perception. Uh, Oren perceives a. Uh, 20 with an 8 on the die. Um, you look around. The the, the building looks the exact same as it, or the, the, the temple structure looks the exact same as it had before. As you peer around the area, though, and you still see these sort of, like, blue-white flickering flames, the immense chamber beyond, the basin is now, like, cracked on the, on the floor from where you had uh, defeated the drowned devoted previously, and then the doors lead, lead further on. Um, two things take, take your eye. First of all, um, you see about a half dozen uh, small crabs that are moving around the edge of the water in the in the larger room, like the the sort of like lower lowered point. Uh, you yeah. kind of see them just just moving about. You also um, you also take note as as this is going on, um, looking over at Vali. You know that uh, Vali's eyes almost have taken on like a, a slightly bloodshot appearance. Like they 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 look um, like like bloodshot eyes, very difficult to to see. But like you're so close and you're peering around. Um, but you could almost tell based on the light that it's it's not lines of red, but instead black lines. Valley, your your eyes. Hmm? Yeah, they look feel the, fine. A reflection in the old point to the side of water that's the most stable with them moving around. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll peer down. Do I see, uh... Do I see the, the veins? Yeah, yeah. Again, it's very, it's very, like, light, but when you when you peer and pay attention, you, you certainly notice it. Huh. I mean, I guess... This whole thing doesn't come with drawbacks. Whatever this whole thing is... Uh, let's, get, let's get out of here. Like, Oren, like, yeah. as if, like, 
haste more hastily as if he's way too scared of the water by appearance he just quickly mm-hmm. gets out yeah and we hear the sort of the slosh 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 of the water as you get out and glub talk kind of like scurries into your backpack you find your way um moving f- toward like through that larger room where you'd fought the drowned devoted previously uh the, the crab sort of like skittering away as you enter uh some of them going into like that that sort of watery depression you can even tell on the the ceiling here as you enter now that you've entered this chamber you can see that on the ceiling that sort of rotten growth uh that was previously there with the the sort of dripping water coming through seems to have have abated and instead it appears as though it's more of a like a regular just like drip of water that occasionally falls from the the cracks in the ceiling here up ahead the doorways are still open you've previously um unlocked it and and through that doorway you can see the underground cityscape of the buried city somewhat beyond uh though at this point uh what light sources do the two of you have oh i ain't got shit i don't don't have dark vision or no i have low light vision but i don't have dark vision we still need like a light source (laughs) but uh dark vision here Uh, druids don't get light so where in a, fumbling around in the I dark. Have, I have five torches on me though. Yeah, you could you could strike up a torch. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I strike up one and start holding it. Come comes a light, and again, you you now as you step out from 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 the the temple back onto this sort of like streetway in the buried city, you have the um sort of orange glow as as you exit. Now, do any of you have any sorts of skills uh, that would help you navigate the pathway that you took before? Uh, I've got society might help. Uh, I have survival. Survival is probably a better one. Yeah, I, I, I would allow both of you to make checks. All right. Cool. Warren's going to be looking for tracks of the candle backs and... Of any other adventurers who may be going going the similar direction what he remembers before. And yeah, uh, my... he got a sixteen. I got a nine. Bolly's Bolly's having a bit of a time of it. She's she's keeping an eye on uh Oren. And by this point she'll probably take off her big coat, kinda noting that it's uh, it's cold down here and wrap it over him. Bundle him up. Wait, yeah. did you say it was cold? We were just in water. So your coat is super soaked. Oh cool. yeah, never mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna wring it out. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's probably he's probably way more happy with the um with the torch. The torch, like, yeah. The torch is like ah warmth. Yeah, just, you just you just see him as just like it's like a drowned bird, rat thing, and he's just shivering. Here, why don't we take a second? Warm back up, dry off. We can start a fire. Yeah, I can. I can do that. And Orin will. Uh, Orin will summon. Um, will summon the protector tree. Okay. And cast that. And the. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I gotta do it. I want it to come oh. up. I'm gonna ruin yeah. the mood. I'm sorry. I'm gonna come up, and the protector tree has like a smiley face, and he's like, "Oh my, it's so nice to see you!" And then he casts I can't Caduce wait to Flame. Protect you. He's, I'm gonna protect you. <laughs> <laughs> and then it just burns. <laughs> oh god! And then and then Orin, with your who's like, who's scared and sad, kind of sits in front of the tree and go, "Here I, I have fire." I didn't mean to protect you like that. Oh, how do I? Why do I feel pain? No. You guys are adding this one. I'm pretty sure it's just a tree. <laughs> that no, he, he he gave it sentience. That's fine. <laughs> I'll bring near to declaration. That's yeah, what that's I right. call. That's you know, but I'm actually, actually, uh, yeah. Zoran, I think you will find that as the GM, I would like you to. <laughs> I, I I think that would be fair. I, I'll actually mark me down one. I think that's fair. <laughs> why would you? Why are you spending a narrative declaration to make your tree sentient what, so you can have it experience pain while you burn it? What is that's wrong? That's rot grind. That's rot grind, baby. 
No, it's that's not hard grind. That's ever just, since that's, Alpha Booth no. that came on this fucking show once. It's just it's like, the tree, how we hurt I'm, I'm naming the tree Alpha Boosa, so he always knows how much sandwich he takes. That's not grim dark. This is grim dumb. <laughs> so you you stop that. Take your damn point back and stop it from being sapient now. <sighs> As the GM, right. I allow the screaming tree to continue. Uh, I blast you with ketchup. <laughs> That's, good. That's good. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, just sitting in front of the burning tree, just, I, I guess that's one way to start a campfire. Just kind of warming my hands up over it, drying off my coat, taking off the hat, and, like, wringing out my hair. All right. Club talk. Club talk. I give him a little chin scritch or something. Yes, like very squishy. Oh, oh, he is so damp. It's like anyway. a prune. Just oh. completely pruned. Um yeah, you, you manage to, 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 to warm to warm yourselves up with the, the, the tree fire. At that point, um Oren, you 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 begin leading the way. Eventually as you travel through the depths, everything kind of like blends together in some strange way but after a while you do manage to find the uh the plodding form of of a candle back to the uh undead the somewhat pre-programmed undead which which meander through parts of uh, the city and, and in fact into parts of the buried city uh to provide light sources and you know give giving you a bit of a bit of a guide on your way out um just as as you uh, as you emerge after you know a couple hours of, of traversing this area, you come to the point where Baldric's explosives had allowed you to exit. You traverse through ancient ancient halls. All the while, more of the strange faces that are on the wall, you know, loom down or look at you from strange angles. All of this kind of gives a somber tone as, as you traverse back up towards the, the ground level of the city. And when you finally do reach that, that area and, and some, some bits of regular light emerge, you find yourself walking onto a street. And I assume that's when Tannhauser rolls up with the bring bring on the bicycle um, with a gargoyle and Rahua in, in tow as well. Uh, Where are right. they? Danny? I knew it. You you did die. Aha! Ah, I asked you. First damn thing I asked you. Duhakis is like gesticulating with a finger. I knew it! Yeah. Save the celebration for later. I think we might need to, um... Let's get back home for a bit. They, they made it out of the pit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, you pull up on your bike just as they have exited, having, you know, spent your time making a bike and then traversing on your bike through effectively a war zone. Good. You're all alive. The revolution lives on. Uh, we'll save the celebration for when we are back home. For now. And I gesture to the pegs on the wheels of the bike. Uh, or on. In, uh, as, as you say, hop on in or in. I guess we all come up and stuff. Orn kind of looks up at you, Tannhauser. And you'll see that he just looks miserable. Like, obviously gone through hell and back kind of feeling. And he looks up at you and goes, Mr. Tannhauser. Yes, Tannhauser, can you give me a perception check? Uh, uh, I will happily do this. And we've got out of sixteen. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. He'll he'll look at you and go, Mister Tanhauser. Yes. Is this what it's like to have a revolution? Unfortunately, yes. You'll see Orin look down with a frown, and then he'll he'll get on the bike. Um, I realized I was I had muted myself to give people time to talk. No. <laughs> Before all, no, this now you can like, join us. <laughs> uh, oops. 
as soon, no, as soon as we pulled up, Rahuna would have jumped off the bike to try and hug his friends, but the moment has passed. Oh. No, he absolutely does. Come on. Make a narrative declaration that here. you hug your friends in the I would like past. to use a hero point to, to hug. upon seeing his <laughs> friends alive, Rahua leaps off the bike in such a way that he just shoves it back a good five feet. <laughs> Whoever's on Everyone the bike, on be it. damned. Just yeah. <laughs> GM, you could totally use a, a villain point to destroy the bike. Why are we spending points? No. Because, because we all spent too many points making a bike. I'm okay with with this uh, with this choice. Uh, okay, just thundering towards them like a rhino, just <gasps> and just skids up to them on his knees and just pulls them into a hug. Hey, bud. Oh, Stop friends! Talk. I'm so glad you're alive. Oh, you, the ugly little one, are alive too. I'm so happy. Squish hug. Stop talk. Yeah, I'm. Did everybody make it out? I saw that you were. Making a diversion, Tanny. I, I thought that, you know, something had happened. He was trying to throw down the gauntlet, but it seems as though their incompetence had you sacrifice your lives instead of me. It was inconvenient, but fortunately, fortune favors us. We may be, to some extent, immune to death. Well... I guess in a way. No. That was weird. But feels you, wrong. you did indeed die, right? Yeah. Or did you not? No, I certainly did. I believe that um when I was bleeding out I got stabbed. At least that's oh. what it felt like. The cowards. The last thing we'd ever saw was seeing you both sucked under the blades of the car. Or a chainsaw car. Oh. I, I was on the other side. I, I, I briefly saw, saw, saw the, uh, the elf man. You ran away. You what? did not die. They perished. I, I, I know, but I saw the elf man beside her right, right, right before the... Then I turned and ran because I didn't want to <sighs> see what was going to happen. <laughs> I, I enjoy the, the idea of Rahua, the generally kind, if chaotic soul, pointing to the elderly stone woman and being like, you didn't die. Why did you run away? <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> True. Uh, that is valid. Your time will inevitably come too. These two. I'm not old. I'm only 25. <laughs> I just talk like this. Oh, oh my wow. god, that's, Living that's out so sad. Sucks. Shut up, old timer. <laughs> I, I narratively declare that she no longer speaks like that. I no. <laughs> never tell, tell this, this professor to shut up, so it's not canon. It's yeah. very good. Yeah, the non canon. But Absolutely. We should, we, we should find shelter, though. The, it seems like the, the hunt is, is dying down, but. We should. We should make our way back to Baldric's safe haven as soon as we, should, we possibly can. I would like to inspect you if you wouldn't mind when we get the chance, but that can wait. Yes. Yeah. For now. Probably for the best. Let's focus on keeping balance on this tricycle. Why don't we walk? Because I built a bike! It's actually a trike if there's three wheels. I was calling it a tricycle because it has three seats. It and nice it turns bicycle. like a revolution. Yes. Jim, right. do I have a basic knowledge of English syntax and grammar to know that that's not what makes a tricycle? <laughs> What's your intelligence? What a mess. Let's find out. Let's, Let's find, find out. out together. Uh, my int is ten. That's that's enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> ten houser. That's that's not how. Common works. What? That's, no, because it has three be seats, it wouldn't be a a bike, a, tri a tricycle. Because of that, it would be because of the wheels. The wheels of the cycle. What? Then, then it, I. And oh, you said I, you went to college, right? I'd have to add more wheels. But, I did go to college, but not for bicycle science. So we cut this back to Baldrick's house. Holly just uh, standing there. 
<laughs> we we cut we cut uh, we cut back to to good old good old Baldrick's house here. Uh, Baldrick, uh, you, you've had like you've had the better part of just eight hours uninterrupted at your home by this point. Like, you've had after some- after the first thirty minutes of Tannhauser not coming back to pound in his door and being like the revolution, the revolution, the revolution, we will revolve like a revolting door. Uh, he would have sequestered himself in his workshop, which is, coincidentally, behind that very heavily barricaded door. Okay. Uh, and I will be crafting. Ooh, what are you, what are you looking to craft? Well, in this instance, because I lack the proper tools, uh, to really create anything of particular value, he will, uh, do... I'll probably make a couple modern alchemist fires, some permanent ones, probably to like use at a later date, if possible. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to give me a crafting check? Yeah, I can absolutely do that. Also, knock me down a hero point. Oh, okay. Yeah, just just do that. Okay, knock him down. Okay, wh- what is with this spending hero points and not telling me what you're spending them for? I'm losing control of this game. You have to tell me. Oh, but I did. <laughs> I did previously. Oh, 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 yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, sure. Yes, anyway, I'm going to craft... So how does this How does this crafting nonsense work? Roll the craft, right? Yeah, roll, roll the crafting check first. By the way, since last time I picked up... Uh, I picked up Brilliant Crafter, which yeah, means that four, I am now an way. expert. Pardon? Yeah, yeah. We all, we're all we're all level four, by the way. I forgot to do it at the oh, intro. Oh, yeah. So. We leveled yeah. up, in case you weren't aware. Uh, fan. I'm, I'm sure you couldn't tell, based on the way that we act exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah, yeah with no <laughs> indicator on the overlay at all. You, it's always a question. Yeah. It's always now ended with know. a question mark. What is wrong with my voice? Hold on a second. Four. What level are we? Four. Uh, four. Who's next? Four. Four? I'm rolling, I'm next? rolling to craft. Okay, sure. Uh, give me a 27. Well, that's gonna be, that's gonna be real, real good. Uh, let me take a peek here. Uh, I'm gonna, like, you're, you're looking to create some moderate alchemist fire? I will say probably, like, some, some permanent ones, not like the 24 hour or the quick infused one. I'm making an actual alchemist fire. So probably, like, three. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, like, let us go into the deep the deep dive of crafting rules right now. Yes. But, um, what I will say, let me just pull up the, the value on these. Uh, yeah, so that, I'll allow you to, with that, um, be able to, like, quickly, I'll assume you've, you've had projects underway and whatnot. I'll allow you to make up to four of them, your choice. Um, each of them would cost the equivalent of, like, five gold pieces in raw materials. So uh, 20 gold pieces for four of them total. Okay, in that case, I will do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, can, I can take it out of the party funds if everyone's cool with that. Yeah. Cute. These will be for our use, after all. Yeah, cool. I have updated your party funds. Okay, so now I can... So I shall just toggle free crafting, then, just to be safe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, should, you, should, be, you should be good. I, you can just add them to your inventory, too, and you'll be good. Okay, very good. Um, and like as you're you're finishing up and you're you're you're, you're crafting these alchemicals for you you have this this like absolute moment of serenity where you've finished you have the the four like perfect vials arrayed on your work desk everything is calm everything is is finally a sense of normalcy in your life uh, I like how you say that he does not ever expect anything to be normal but I understand what you're trying to do funny man. Because that's when that is absolutely when Tannhauser begins knocking on. The yeah, door. I'm gonna kick the door <laughs> open, and I'm gonna shout out, "Revolution! Revolution! We shall revolt like a revolving door! Revolution!" <laughs> Terrific callback. Thank you very much, Speaker, for remembering exactly what I said. You're welcome. We are we are on the same wavelength. This is why we write well together. Anyway, uh, with that happening, Baldrick is immediately going to. Uh, bundle up his explosives into a small satchel and just keep it on himself. Uh, he is now going to quickly step out of the uh, bu- the bundled up door, the one that's got like all the locks and whatnot on it. Yeah. 
What the uh, what the other people will see as this happens is a very bright green glow emanates from behind the door as he cracks it open and slides out. And then he shuts the door rapidly and locks it all the way back up again. And there's the obviously time. the sound of a pneumatic hiss, like a... And there's like they all see this, and there's the momentary like sound of, of another door opening as uh, stepping out from beside is is Crunch. Oh, oh, oh I, I heard, I heard Revel. Oh, oh, Madam, ma Madam Farley and, and, and Sir Oren, you, oh, oh, you, you survived. What? But you made it out. As as suddenly you hear from like outside Volley's voice. Oh, oh, very. Oh, very, very fast. I, I was, I was, I was a bit, I was a bit worried. You see, I thought I might have to heft my my hammer in service of your comrades and uh, join the party, so to speak. But I, I suppose, I suppose, with you, you two still alive and well, I can continue my 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 work as, as a smith. Speaking of which, I've 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 finished those runes. Uh, you and you and Master Tannhauser were looking for. <laughs> Baldric is fucking sprinting to the door because this man is waffling too long. Get in the house. Be quiet. Yes, of course, of course, of course. Uh, and, and like, like you all sort of like come into the house as he like looks over to her. Uh, the, the 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 fair maiden is taking a nap in the other the other state. No, 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 no need to worry, Master Master Rohu. I I ensured she made it swiftly and safely to Crunch. the domicile. Yes, yes. Get in your house and be quiet. I, I'm going to go into yours. I'd like to, to join the conversation. Clunk, clunk, clunk. Fine, do it. Keep Cl quiet. Closes the door. Everyone is now in. Uh, everyone like Hawkus is here. Crunch is here. The the rest of the party. You're all in Baldrick's house. <laughs> Fuck it. Crunch is killing me, man. He just keeps <laughs> wobbling. <laughs> come, 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 come. Yeah, just... The man's got a speech impediment where he just goes. <laughs> I shall stand by the door, Abner, in case you know someone just just uh, comes in. All right. Good. Are we all inside? I'm here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's all of us. Glob talk eight. Glob talks eight. Terrific. He is. Right. Well, I see you guys have all come back at this juncture. Yeah. Turns out Dr. Crin's theory, uh, was right. Uh-huh. What, 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 oh, what theory? <laughs> what? Dr. Crin? Duhakis' <laughs> theory. Crin. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it seems like Duhakis' theory was right. We, uh, woke up in that, um, in that pool that we fell in when we originally fell into the Undercity. That's so. Yeah. So you didn't survive getting run over by the Iron Baron. You just happened to vanish bloodlessly. That seems to be what happened. If there weren't any uh, paste left behind from our corpses. Well, I didn't exactly Hawkins go back to check. is making her way to the kitchen and is like opening her tome and flipping through pages, having like put it down on your counter, displacing like some things and like a precarious uh, like basket <clears throat> of eggs near the end. Okay, here we are. He's not rich enough to afford eggs. What are you talking about? Egg. Fine. Basket of eggs. That's the one. That's <laughs> <laughs> the one. <laughs> There's a mud on him by your poor one. I, th I think you'll find it's actually a basket of fucking jerky because it's all you can afford. Very good. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, the two of us woke up in the Undercity. Then we came up and... Met Town Tannhauser, and here we are. Well, I was gonna ask exactly how you pulled that little vanishing act, but I see that it was not related to you doing so intentionally. Doesn't matter, you're here it now. It would have been pretty cool, but no. I just got stabbed by Duchelf and woke up in a pool underground. Well, good enough a way to die as any, I guess. Welcome back all the same. Hmm. You shelf stabbed you. He's a traitor then. Well, it's likely. 
Oren, you distinctly remember Dushelf like pickpocketing Polly when she was. Oh yeah, I was going about. First. I was about to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Or, like, I don't hear Oren's old shaky, nervous. He's just like bundling up with his wings and stuff. But he'll be like, I, I saw Dushelf trying to steal off of Volley when she was down, and that's why I try to jump over and try to help her, but. Yeah, so I, it was Dushelf who was trying to take your stuff, but. Well, I gotta be I honest, I kind of expected it. Thanks, bud. No problem, buddy. Well, alliances with the dishonorable. Hmm. Well, I trust you all have gotten a taste firsthand at exactly what the Tyrant's Guild is capable of then now, correct? You'll see yeah. this horn just, just nod silently. Yeah, we're aware, Baldrick. Is this going to turn into a lecture? No. Because listen, I don't want to hear it. It's not died. a lecture. I'm aware, if you give me a second. This ain't a lecture. It's just a check. Y'all wanted in on this little tactic of mine, and now you're here. If you want out, you still can. Nothing tying you to me, and as far as I'm concerned, you two being dead means that you're officially off their radar. But, if you want to stick around, that's your prerogative. I tried to warn you. If you want to stick around, I guess I'll appreciate the help, but just... This is what we're looking at going here forward. I can't even take on those things. I have tried figuring out numerous ways that we can try to take that thing out. I have tried sticky bombs, I have tried larger bombs, I have tried... I've tried mantling one once, that didn't work out terribly well, but I got away so it didn't fail. It's... dealing with those things is hard. So from here forward, if we're gonna do stuff with regards to taking out the Tyrant's Guild, we're gonna have to think a lot smarter than just taking them straight on. Especially if we're trying to actually succeed at it. <sighs> but that if you're going to stick around, I'll, I'll help you the best I can. Just let's avoid being liabilities, shall we? Orin looks at Tannhauser. He goes like, Mr. Tannhauser, have you fought these things before? I have not fought these exact devices. But on the sands, yes, I've piloted it and faced off against similar machines. I've even helped build them. If anyone can come up with a counter stratagem, Baldrick, you and I can. But I don't believe our failure was a failure of tactics. We simply didn't anticipate how heavy the resistance would be. It seemed almost just by chance, or perhaps some grim providence that brought such a collection of force to bear against us. Be that as it may, I find you can offset chance with enough preparation. Correct. And next time, you will be prepared. If I may, and I know this is uncharacteristic, I'd like to divert the discussion from our revolutionary tactics. Rahua. Yes. We understand, or at least theorize, that whatever caused our companions to reanimate was tied to our new divine patronage. I consider you the most well-versed on things of the metaphysical. Is there any wisdom you can preclude from these happenstances? Uh, I would like to make a check for that. You can give me a religion check to recall knowledge. Sure. Do it, do it. Ooh. 14. A 14 is not like... Yeah, 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 you, you understand cosmologies and stuff, but like, re, like, like, resurrection is, is something you know about, but as far as the, the particulars of this, it's, it's a bit beyond you. Uh, you've never heard of anything. Now, again, your existence has been fairly sheltered, so you maybe don't have all of the background on this sort of stuff, so... There could be something, you just, you personally don't know. Well, I have heard stories of powers beyond calling, into, I suppose, back to life dead and calling into existence that which does not exist before. Certainly, I am proof enough of that. I am unfortunately a bit limited in my knowledge of these affairs. My existence is 
been quite brief comparative to yours, at least in my current state. But whatever had brought us back from... Either brought them back from death, I am not versed in that. Certainly there is a need to destroy need in order to create, but... Nothing was quite destroyed, at least from first appearances. If you give me time, I might be able to glean some more into the nature of our friend's resurrection. But as uh, of right now, I cannot. Got a question, actually, Thurston. Okay. With, um... Could I possibly perform a society check in regards to, like, determining what... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not priest, but, like, clergyman of some kind, like a cleric or whatever within the city could possibly help answer his questions. Yeah, give me, give me a society check. Society! Society? I'll give you a 24. As, as you, 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 you ponder who would have stuff, like, your head quickly, like, well, not quickly, slowly turns towards the gargoyle, who is, like perched over this 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 tomb or uh, tome on on your, your your kitchen table and looking right here and you realize that Duhakis is supposed to specialize in these kinds of things Duhakis, if you don't mind me asking ah, there it is. Oh, I found it right here slams like a, a jagged finger into the the, the, the book <laughs> I knew it I knew it I was glad I brought this one Dargus. She looks up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Oh, all right, all right, all right. So, 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 uh, so you two died, but but all of you died, ex except for you, right, 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 right points to quote. I, I, I don't believe I've died. I've, I've fallen down a few times. Okay, okay, good. You keep staying at the door. All right, so, so, so you, you all fell into that sinkhole. You all died. Off, off, off. Do, do you know what happens when you die? Anyone? Uh, what happens when you die? Not bothered with it much myself. Go ahead, explain. Okay, m metaphysically speaking, when you die, your 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 essence, your your soul soul matter, um, is transposed from your body, and you go to the fundamental battlefield where the forces of of the Perfection, beneficence, malice, and, and 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 anarchy all keep fighting each other, and then those essences seep through to the crucible of creation, where you're animated with life, and then new life forms on the planet. It's 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 a it's a cosmology of things. But 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 sometimes deities, divine beings specifically, are known to stop soul matter from from going back to the fundamental path. Uh, when they do that, the first time, it, it's just called sponsorship. They, they they take. Now, what I have here, and she turns this, like, tome around and, and, and points to, um, like, a, 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 like, a scripted article uh, that's been written, like, handwritten with, like, a, a picture done in line art of, of, like, a monastery building that's standing up in a swamp. Uh, this, this is information... Um, uh, 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 <sighs> It, it's it's about the monastery of of the twice reborn. Uh, it, it's not important. It's 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 outside of outset. But 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 there was a knight there who went by the name of uh, Sabruna the Adamant. Um, she had this happen to her. She died um, when she went to fight some corrupted wildlife in the swamps, and then she came back. Uh, and this this happened a few more times, and uh, so when she when she returned, uh, it, it became this oh this 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 very important thing. A any anywho, uh, what well, what this what this boils down to is is that a divine being has has taken interest in you, and this has happened historically um, since since the earliest days, uh, since, since since outset was first created. Uh, divine powers have taken interest in in, in in mortals and empowered them slightly to accomplish uh, b b destinies, typically, is, is the thing. Um, which becomes a bit a bit tricky, a bit tricky, um, because they can't quite control exactly what their sponsored folk are going to do, but they they, they sponsor them in hopes of accomplishing something. So, so I would guess, um, based off what I've heard, uh, wait, and she turns and looks at Orin and Valley. Wait, where did you, you where did you wake up when you uh, expired and came back? 
The pool of water in the Undercity. Pool of water? Okay, right, right. She's like flipping through the tome a bit more. Okay. So, when when deities sponsor, they 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 have a a, a site associated with them, um, and there there might be several of these sites that are associated with them. And in the in in the case of say, uh, we'll, we'll we'll use Auntie Drown as an example, which I'm fairly certain is the one who's sponsoring you. Um, that would mean that you would come back at a at a prominent point of water. So the the pool. That would explain why you all died when you fell down the pit and woke up in the pool. Are you following oh. me so far? I I think I follow. We were informed that that was... It was a temple to the old powers, but it was specifically ascendant for anti-drown. That, 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 that makes sense. Now, now the, there's, there's a bit of conflicting conflicting notes here I, what would what would the what would the what would the kids say um <laughs> ah yes the first one's free so when you're brought back for the first time uh that's that's the the establishment of the bond between you and that divine entity so uh, at this point you're you're somewhat tethered somewhat now now that that's good um Looks over to Volley and Orin again. Uh, are you feeling okay? Um. Any problems you've a... noticed? Um. I do have these veins in my eyes. Can I open them up? And uh, funny Booming feeling in the back gargoyle of my head. Gargoyle grandma comes over to you, stares oh. into your eyes. Uh huh. Sour very breath close. as her mouth opens. Ah. All right, breathe through our nose, please. Like sour breath through her her nostrils. Uh, uh, by the way, as as Volley mentions, like I've got these veins in my eyes. Baldrick proceeds to go and like prepare a cup of blood eye coffee. Mm-hmm. Mm, wow. Walks over to uh, walks over to you next, Oren. Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. My eyes aren't what they they should be, but I think I think you have them too. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. So this is this is a oh, this is this is exciting. I I, I, I uh, do. Do you have a do you have a quill and parchment? Bucket bucket man. Begging coffee. Uh, does anyone have parchment quill? I will. I have a spell book. I'll rip out a page. Good, good, good. She, 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 she be like, <laughs> Don, Don Hazard loses a level one spell. It's it's yeah. it's his little little red book. Goodbye, magic missile. Little red uh, book. Just like yeah, she begins scrawling on this. All right. So. Now now where where this becomes very interesting, you see, is uh, <laughs> um, well as you know the the rot started appearing um. um Relatively recently, um, I, I believe it was uh, three hundred and twenty years ago, r roughly, roughly speaking. Now, ever since then, anyone who has uh, benefited from sponsorship, if they're brought back, the rot somewhat takes a hold of them. So, and she again looks, looks to Volley and Orin, you've got some rot in you now. She, like, looks down at the paper, like, continuing to scrawl. Uh, oh, uh, hold on. Uh, we, it, my, my people don't really deal with the rot. What do you mean? Well, um. Uh, so the the, the 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 rot um huh. um if you well, have <laughs> skills that are appropriate here would be arcana occultism uh nature or religion nature we go i don't have uh, any of those volley is just quietly freaking out like no no, no i've actually yeah, yeah, yeah. makes uh nature <laughs> got the rot. 24. okay that's a natural 20 Ooh. with a 31. Tannhauser is well versed in dealing with the rot. Uh, Rahua, were you going to make a religion? I was going to. 
You go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I'm not so gonna because the guy's got a net twenty. Why do I need to do that? <laughs> who is I'm gonna, so I'm new? gonna hear a point it. No, I'm gonna hear, <laughs> hear it. I'm yeah, deeply yeah. concerned. Who is my not friends. dumb? I Aww. swear I'm not dumb. He's yeah, concerned for his win. Natural <laughs> one. Use that hero point for who I believe in you. Oh, oh damn! Thirty-one. Uh, oh, damn. Oh, I'm sorry. No, okay. Very like nice. 20, Twenty-six. Saw 10 26. Out of six, yeah, yeah. You saw ten out because it removed yours. I got okay. excited. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Orin, Orin, and uh, Rahua. You know that the the rot is something that uh, began to appear. Uh, yeah, like Duhaka said, about three hundred and twenty years ago. Some <clears throat> some event that is unknown but it was the first uh recorded uh instance of of the rot uh, near near the city of outset and since then in the past 3 centuries effectively this this thing this rot has spread out uh throughout the world of tyne um going as far as as other other continents it sometimes has the the title of the demise uh in addition to just being called the rot uh it is essentially a, like an infection, a malady of sorts that is thought to be a cult in nature, though it still has tendrils that touch into the arcane, into like the natural world and the, the divine. So, so it's something that is like seeped in into these these con these magical concepts. That being said. Um, when it when it first appeared, it spread very quickly. Um, it was its first like actual appearance was near outset in in the inheritor lands to the to the east, the sort of wide swath of of countries, uh, which you know Crunch to be from one of the inheritor lands, Legibet. Um, those who are afflicted by rot in people and things can become afflicted by rot. They take on a sickly pallor and like essentially develop a pulsating black tumorous mold masses um, that are connected by strands of similarly like watery black mold. Um, eventually this infection can overtake a body to the point that that creature's mind completely fails, and they become known as a rot-infested or simply rotten creature. Um, such creatures are essentially piloted by some sort of alien intellect or unknowable uh, design, and it is it is known in many places that like rot-infected creatures seem to do strange things that make no no sense uh you might have like a village that is completely overwhelmed by by a rot infection and the villagers start building a bridge in the middle of the desert they're, they're, they're just these things that aren't aren't really explainable that happen now whilst the rot is in essence an infection it's not something that develops in a standard way it seems that the direct exposure to tangible rot like the physical sort of black mold uh that's what causes a a physical um infection and that goes through you know like like stages like a disease normally would however there's also kind of a a spiritual side to it and creatures can become infected by the rot on like a, a soul spiritual level which which has a different progression track so to speak and that is where, where your knowledge of this ends. However, Tannhauser, with your crit, um, you have certainly heard a bit more details on the rot, and, and you know that there are essentially three um, stages of, of rot infestation. The first very much matches what is occurring with Orin and Vali from what you have just heard that they begin to um, take, like, have eyes that appear to be bloodshot, but instead of red, they're, they're, they're black lines. Their skin becomes uh, pallid and cold to the touch. Um, and s at some point, like, a lot of individuals at this stage, unless they're paying attention, might not even be fully aware of their states. Um, they might just, like, start to think they have a weird cold or whatnot. Then, then it gets a bit more intense when like their their mood starts to change and so people at that stage might have like short temperedness now this develops into like 
basically like body like developing these, these, these this mold their skin starts looking more like a corpse they might develop splotchy points on them um further going on to open wounds blisters all that sort of like dark dark sort of things and then once it reaches a final stage they are essentially like overwhelmed and that alien intellect takes complete control of them so yeah that's what you would know about this tanhauser probably from seeing it firsthand um on your your journeys and other places in tyne um it's it's not a traditional disease in a sense though so it's not something where you have to worry about like being infected because you're with them and and from what you would know tanhauser this is much more that sort of spiritual side of the infection something that probably develops in different ways than a traditional infection would spread. So, essentially, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, if left unchecked, this disease in Bali and Orin will inevitably progress unless we find some way to stem it? Um, based on what you've, you've heard from, from Duhakis and, and some, some other, other notes, it's less that it's less that this will advance. It's more that, say, for example, you were to die again, or they were to die again, the the rot sort of seeps in now that it has corrupted that sponsorship process. So somehow, when you die, normally what would happen is the deity would go, "Nope, your your soul matter bounces back to time. You get reanimated. Uh, I use my divine powers to give you a body." Hooray! Now, when this happens again in the last three hundred years, when you die and you get sponsored and you come back, the rot weasels its way in. Now, mechanically, for everyone listening at home, and for the players who are now rotten, both Vali and Orin have the rotten one condition. How the rotten condition works is anytime you are knocked unconscious, you essentially are treated as wounded equal to your rotten condition. But unlike the wounded condition, you can't remove it through any normal means. There might be special means to remove the rotten condition, but none of you know about such means. Um, so essentially, Orin and Vali are permanently wounded one, which means if they're knocked unconscious, they would immediately go to dying two, or if they got crit, they would go to dying three. Interesting. And for Condis, who don't know Pathfinder 2nd Edition, you die at dying four. Exactly. So, so it's, it's having a permanent wound on you you can't get rid of, so it's much easier to die. You know, unless you take catastrophic damage all at once. I mean, yeah, unless the, the math, the math twice your health. Yeah. yeah. But basically your, your what this health, is, is um, these extra lives, so to speak, that you're getting through sponsorship, these do-overs, they are coming with a price now that it is easier for you to die. And eventually, once you, like, progress through this, this rotten effect, like, and this is what Tannhauser would know, once you start progressing through this rotten effect, it gets visibly worse. And once you would reach a point of like having so much rot on you, you wouldn't even be in control of your yourself. With my natural 20, would I know mm -hmm. of any of the rare ways in which this infection could be cured? No, this is this is something more of like it's so rare to even understand the levels of infection. Like, the rot is such a nebulous concept in the world. The crit is what gave you that additional information. Okay, okay. As far as, like, knowing, like, how do we reverse this, you would probably need to have someone who is, like, a studied scholar on this do a bunch of research in, like, libraries. And Where are we going to find one of those? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, turn to the rest of the group. I've seen this kind of infection before on a comrade of mine. You were all suffering from the first stage of rot infection. At first, the symptoms are minute. You will be more susceptible to fatal damage. You might be irritable. Symptoms similar to a common cold. I suspect, should you die again, the symptoms will become even more severe. After the third time, I fear you may well become fully rotted, no longer in control of your faculties, and completely at the behest of your infections. For now, you are stable, 
with your current analysis. I've heard rumors that there may be some way to stem this infection, but I know not how. And that is why I will implore Duhakis. I require you to research this rotted infection to the best of your abilities and deliver us some means of curing it. I, I have more documentation uh, back in back in my office at the, the cackling jackass. I could I could certainly take a look now that we we know what's going on. Uh, it's, it's important that you realize, though, if, if you're sponsored, that there's a reason you've been sponsored. <laughs> yes, perhaps so. It might or take in... me several days to, uh, uh, to, to to prepare for this and. Orin. Yeah. I know despite your youth and seeming inexperience, you are a wise individual. Can I ask you to aid Rahua in coming to some matter of truth about our current sponsorship? You'll see that Orin's been kind of like horrified this entire time. And he'll just kind of look around at everyone and uh, he'll just see him just kind of just kind of nod. We will reach the bottom of this unfortunate yet fortunate turn of events. Rest assured. Um, can ev uh, okay, uh, really quick Baldric, Orin, and Vali can you give me perception check? Sure. Me one second. Oren got a fifteen. Okay. Bali gets fourteen. You said perception, right? Yeah. Re per 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 I have not been rolling very high. Oh, Where the nice. hell is my perception? There it is. My goodness. Gotta get them all out oh. early. Uh, I'll give you there a twenty-three. Go. Okay, so with a 23, Baldrick, as this is going on, there is something that catches your, your attention as well, uh, because it is such an intrusion in your home. Uh, you see that, that Rahua has a scroll case, like, uh, at his waist, which has the prominent mark of the Tyrant's Guild on it. Uh, Rahua. It, yes? Give me that document. Oh, sure, I, I found it at the site of the... Un Fortunate event for who will hand over the scroll casing. Uh, uh, can I just open it up or is it like. There you go. <laughs> what? You open it up and it uh, produces a letter. Oh, would someone like to read this? Yep, I will. Hold on. All right. From the Tyrant's Guild, off in the Office of the Martinet of the Pawn, City of Outset, blessed by the First House. To my loyal Outriders, I have ordered the release of all the pre-guilty riffraff from the District's prisons. Their incarceration was an affront to the noble role we have in the society, which is to ensure love extends out to all. Let it be known that those prisoners were not innocent, and their release will undoubtedly send lead us to others who do not shine with love. As does the... As does the light chase the darkness, so shall you chase them. A hunt is declared throughout the pond's pilaster and the regions around the sinkhole. Those recently released will scurry to find others of their malefic tendencies, and you, my faithful riders, shall cut them down and excise their evil, as one might excise the rot from a corrupt body. Our district will soon shine with the brilliance long, yeah, Marnet Cardoza. He, uh crumples up the paper and tosses it into his stove. It seems there's a connection between the prison release and the hunt. Yeah, they released the prisoners so that they could scurry back to their little domains, leading the Outriders right to their doors. Mm. There's a bait act. That restaurant was the only place you could get a good avocado casserole. Shut up. 
Okay, how about at that lovely shut up? Let's let's take our break here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's time for a break time. Everyone, get break some time. snacks. Break time. Get some well, snacks. Oh, it's break time, Becky. You, you got your rock grind nicest, Gav. All right, right bro. be right back. Oh, sorry, sir. I'll have it right here. All right, that's easy. Rock roll, bro. Bye. As our adventurers take a break, we'd like to take a moment and thank our sponsor, you. You sharing the videos, advertising the streams, and supporting us on Patreon makes everything we do here happen. You help us create the show, create a custom tabletop RPG setting for your campaigns, create monsters, items, spells, and more, all for you. If you love what you've seen so far, or if you want to use the monsters and assets used in the show, please visit our website at www.narrativedeclaration.com for our Patreon and more. All right, and we're back. Welcome back, everybody. The oh. revolution. Oh, God, he's oh. dead. Cracks your bones he's gone. No. In his last will and testament. I leave. Ed. My fortune is yours for the taking. Dead. I have to find it first. I left everything in one piece. Yo! <laughs> One piece made of rubber. Over a thousand He's episode marathon. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, stopping the stream. No more game. We're just watching One Piece until yeah. Twitch takes us down. Absolutely. Oh, oh, get ready for another go. Morbius stream. Here we go. Let's get <laughs> more Morbid in time. <laughs> Who, what's up, my fellow Morbids? It. it only took us uh, an hour and 47 minutes to stream to say Morbid time. Hey, I said it at the start of the stream. Give me some credit. <laughs> Hulky is a revolutionary. Wait, Truly, we do not wait, deserve. I, I, I talked to people before the my fellow morb heads. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. Like before everyone got here, I was like, okay, I'm gonna put a timer or a counter, and I'm gonna use, and when someone's gonna say morb in time, <laughs> I know what's gonna happen. Listen, I just wanted to say, you know, Odo Zoran, I'm really sad that last episode. You guys got totally morbed on by. Oh, by I know. I hate it here. <laughs> Why did God leave? <laughs> This this is the true meaning of the rotten one condition. <laughs> Why did God leave? Yeah, mess with the best, more like the rest. Oh. Mm -mm. Guest anyway, yeah. let's uh, let's let, let's play some rock grind, fellas. <laughs> yeah, no, I'd yeah. rather I'd rather talk more about Morbius. It's so funny. Oh, oh boy. Oh, nice, because we mentioned Morbius, the atheist game that gave us another hundred subs. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Stop, My man. man. Uh, uh, well. Stop that shit, I'm about to morb. Shut up. Okay, well, so, um, morbing aside, we are still in Baldrick's house. Um, having yes. made made uh, some, some discoveries about the rot uh, that you apparently have, have earned the attention of a divine power, which uh, is currently suspected to be Auntie Drown of the Old Powers, uh, that for, for whatever nebulous reason you don't quite possibly know at this point, um, that this this rot has overtaken, or at least taken a foothold in Vali and Orin, and though it is not actively spreading, should bad things befall you or continue to def to to befall you, should you fall again, you might find yourselves more and more rotten until you can find some way to um, reverse some of these effects. Uh, right. So uh, Baldrick's going to come around with uh, some some coffee from some blood eye coffee for uh Vali and Oren. Thanks. Got anything to Irish this up a bit? I don't know what that What's is, but I said no. Irish. You know, it's uh it's a far off land uh distantly in the skies. Uh I need alcohol is what I'm saying. No, and you're not getting any of my aquafortas. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Baldrick. Yeah, drink up. Yeah. Hey, if you guys drink that, I want you to uh, I want you to know you need to make a, a fortitude test. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Oh, very I'm good. drinking it up. Let's see if I die. It is a D it is a DC 14 fortitude save. 
I got a 16. You make it. Congrats, you're not addicted. Ah. Nice. <laughs> Caffeine does have addiction. That levels. is true. That is uh, true. I, I really ought to. I ought to have read Blood Eye Coffee a little bit more carefully because if you drink it, you get a plus one AC item bonus. Oh. Mm -hmm. However, after uh, after after an hour, you get stupefied, and then after three hour, after three hours, you uh, can't recover from fatigue. Oh God. Yeah. For just a day. Take a drink. Just. Oof. Mr. Legibet. Wow. Or, or, Legibet, whatever his last name is. Crunch, Crunch, yes. But, but uh, um, Legibet is where I'm from. I, you see, I'm, I'm Crunch of Legibet. It's an inheritor land, you see, in, in, far to the east of here. Crunch. Yes. Do you have Do you have my leather armor? Oh. Yes, I I had completed that as well. I believe I believe there were also also the the, the ruins of striking that you had all uh, requested purchase. I've completed them all. Thank you, Crunch. Oh, I yes. assume he has them. With them. Or? Yeah, yeah. Like like okay. he the he like very quickly is able to as you as you're standing there. Like he runs back or goes back, not runs back. He walks back into his home, goes downstairs, gets the items, comes back and begins. Um, like as you're continuing your, your important discussions, he's in the corner with like his hammer, like with your weapons going tink, tink, tink and your armor, like just give me a second. I gotta, I gotta actually do some adjustments because it won't let me equip. I believe to I believe two for Tannhauser and um, I believe Tanhazer and Volley, you were uh, you were upgrading your equipment as well. Um, yes. So I will I will add this because I believe you were you were getting striking striking added two weapons, which I will do right now. Um, Yes. As Enseer, which is his name, Retori, Orin will go up to Vali. And, mm -hmm. uh, and he'll go, uh, it's Vali, can I see your hand? Yeah. And you'll I see that Orin, uh, Orin will grab Vali's hand. And he'll basically just use his druidic magic to cast restoration on her in some potential attempt to try to either fight the rot that's inside of her or anything else like that to try to see if he can do anything. And just for explanation, I put it in chat, but it's such a long spell thing. Restoration, what it does for Pathfinder 2nd Edition is that um, it's basically use it to remove like a condition. Say for example, someone's like, like has toxins in them or something like that. Uh, it's literally just cast spell and it just gets removes the stage but um, since this is a special case I, I assume what's gonna happen yeah um can you give me a can you give me a will save Oren made a 15 on three on the die okay so oh um, boy de describe what your restoration spell looks like as you attempt to like cast it. Uh, basically, what, basically, like you'll see that kind of like a green, yellowish glow will just kind of, it's like twirling bits of magic kind of goes from him, from his uh, tree-like arm as he's holding onto Valley, and it'll start surging through uh, from him to Valley, and you'll see that like things kind of bright up, it has a nice like just foresty pine scent to it all, you know, just like the car freshener. <laughs> and as things are surging around, it like kind of wind picks up inside uh, inside of the room. Um, that's just kind of like the the feel and the look of it so far. Things been the glow a little bit, and wind picks up a bit. Yeah, and and after after a few moments of this, you can feel that um, this this magic recedes back into you. Um, you know, like you've you've cast or you've, you've you've channeled this type of magic before, but never never tried so intently. And as as this this happens, it it recedes back into you, um, clearly having having an effect, but 
not removing any of the, the, the physical conditions that you, you see on Vali. It, it seemed like it was attempting to, wasn't able to, and then, then recoiled back. And as you um, briefly look down at your wooden arm, um, like, or your, yeah, your, your wooden arm that you would, you would perform this with, uh, sort of like flexing your muscles instinctively through that arm, Orin. Um, in the palm of your hand, you see one of the blank faces form and stare out at you, its eyes meeting yours for a moment. And it, it gives you just a complete shock, sending fear through your body. Ah, 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 like, Orin immediately tumbles backwards, like crashing mm-hmm. through things and like wings kind of buffeting everything. And he's slapping his hand and he immediately kind of like grabs like one of Baldrick's knife, knife and everything else. He kind of gets ready to stab at it, but he's just so terrified. He's like, ah, and as you go to stab at it, you can see that the, the face is no longer on the palm of your hand. And Oren, hey, 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 hey! Like running up to him, like grabbing it's, the hand with the knife. It's, it's, it was in here, and he'll he'll point to his palm and everything, and uh, he'll look up at you, Vali. Like I try, I, I I try to get rid of it. I. But hey, hey, it's okay. It's, L- like he, like he, Tanny he, said, it's difficult to get rid of it. Don't, don't worry. We'll figure out. We'll figure out something, right? Uh, I give him like a optimistic smile as best I can. So just put the knife down. What did, what what happened? I I tried to I, I tried getting it off of you, and it it showed itself, and it's right here. And he'll point to his wooden hand and like show the palm. And uh, he like he he will not bring the palm up to look at it. He be he grabs like either like a curtain or something, just not caring, or like a rag, anything he could find, and just like takes it and just binds it around the hand, and he just so he just won't have to look at it. Yeah, absolutely. Baldrick is kind of watching on, looking at whatever the hell is happening. Mm-hmm. Why don't we get you some rest, Oren? I think that maybe a bit of a nap's in order. Oren nods and like he's he's like holding his wrist and keeping his hand away, kind of in a way. Like it's like it's obviously like it's tainted, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, and he um he just lets you take him wherever. If there's like a couch to crash on, or you know, like a yeah thing or something. There's, there's a couple yeah, there's... sofas laying around for you to rest on. Uh, Baldrick will address the pair of them at this point. All right. With that in mind, let's not try something that doubtless thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, have tried before, so we don't end up doing that again, shall we? Right. Or not. Imagine every cleric on the damn surface of Tyne has tried everything they can to fix it, so let's not tempt fate and try it ourselves, shall we? Or Next nods and, and heads out to one of your... Do you just have a room with mattresses? Or? <laughs> no, because he doesn't keep room. people in his home. He's got a crash pad. Yeah. Got a couch. No, what 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 you have is a living room with two makeshift couches and a reading chair. It's okay. We, we'll call it a studio, which is like nineteen hundred a month in this city, apparently. And, Rahua uh, can sleep on the floor. He is made of tree. Rahua doesn't necessarily need to sleep on the floor. Actually, I'm not sure if he has to sleep at all. Typically. Rahua can sleep in the stove. Never he goes to that's sleep. Not, that's not ill advised. Also, <laughs> I will break the stove. All right, yeah, I'll guide Oren down to the couch. I'm going to put my coat over him. Just try and get some rest. Oren nods and tries to go to sleep. Hey. Yes. Is, everyone, is everyone going to enjoy some rest or just Oren? What's the... Rahul the will, uh, will start to follow down to find a place to hunger down for the evening, but will try to... Observe, Actually, uh, there, but Orin will that... call Rahua over. Is that Rahua? Yes, Orin. 
I'm not Zorin. <laughs> Shut your fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> He'll, um, is it like, come here, Glob Talk. He'll take Glob, Glob Talk, Talk out of his bag. Like, uh, he's kind of sitting up a bit, and he'll look at Brahua and be like, I don't think we can, we're the right group to really take care of him. Glob Talk, help! Glob Talk, help! I know, Glob Talk. I, I know you want to help, but we can't put you in that much danger again. And I do believe there's somebody, uh, what Mr. Crunch has called a fair maiden. We might be able to better take care of you. So, Rua, if you could potentially ask her if she's okay with that. Of course I can ask Miss Sweet if she's okay. We can see if he will go along with her, but all the same, I can also keep him safe, potentially. Rua uh, will hold out his mechanical hand. No, he'll he'll pass Gleb Talk over and go like, I'm sorry, Gleb Talk, I I don't want you to go through that again. Glob, Glob Talk, Glob Talk, help! Glob Talk like kind of like climbs on to your uh, to your wooden hand. I I also want to point out to everyone here, I have turned Glob Talk into an inventory piece that I've just been moving around. Uh, Rua, you now have Glob Talk in your inventory. Okay, uh, I need. I need you for a frame of reference for Rahua. Is Glob Talk big enough to fit in the palm of his hand, or at least sit there? Um, like yeah, like it would. He'd be like pretty big, but yeah, yeah, he could definitely. Yeah. So, Rahua holding Glob Talk will look down at this poor, mishapen homunculus. Glob Talk. Yes, Glob Talk. You and I have not had a chance to speak much, but. While you may be safer at Grandma Sweets, I may be able to at least keep you well from getting harmed in that manner. I need to ask if you if you trust me necessarily. I have not given you many reasons to, but I can say I will not harm you willingly. There's there's like a smile. Glab talk help. Good enough for me. Uh, as he says this, the wooden bits comprising Rahua's more, well, say wooden, like kind of weird mechanical hand, start to split apart as a bit of blackness, similar to the black orb you would see in his chest cavity, shows itself from within the palm of the hand. And in about a moment, Rahua brings his other hand above and crushes down on his open palm with glove talk inside. And I would like to cast Pet Cash. Ooh, what's that spell do, my my buddy? Well, you you open your cloak <laughs> or create a gap with your hands, drawing the target into a pocket dimension just large enough for its basic comfort. No other creature can enter this extra-dimensional space, and the target can bring along objects only if they were designed to be worn by a creature of its kind. And it you has said, enough air, food, and water <laughs> to sustain the target for the duration. You said blood talk hours. to the fucking Shadow Realm. Incorrect. <laughs> Pokeball. 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 <laughs> if, if you require, if you require me to make a hero point for this, I will spend. No, it. no, fuck. But no, no, no hold on, hold on, hold on. Hear me out. Hear me out. Pretty early. No, no, no. You can do this. I'm, I'm a okay with you doing this. You took this spell ever since that fucking crab, didn't you? Correct. You've, you've been sitting on this since those fucking crabs. <laughs> What you've done is you've also found a way for him to get Glub Talk out of the way of Baldric, who is probably going to try and dissolve him in acid. Correct. Oh, yeah, you can't you can't dissolve yeah, but... him in acid now that he's trapped in the fucking shadow yeah. realm. Glub Talk for, to say curiosity for the, the purpose of curiosity. Anyway. Pain. It's it's not a nightmare dimension. For the, I mean, I guess for if you want to feel like it is, it is. But at least my, my flavor of it. Uh, think of it as crawling into the knot hole of a tree. It's loamy, there's like a fresh, dew-kissed bit of grass growing inside that you can see the sunlight peeking through, but nothing else. Aww. It's just comfy enough for a creature of that size to fit in. So he's he is safe Sweet. and sustained for all he's intents and no purposes for eight hours. The AC is I also, on. <laughs> he's listening to his favorite music. <laughs> I really like how you you specified there's, there's grass. It's like, is he an herbivore? There are berries and whatnot, too. There's enough food, water, and air for him to survive. 
I admit, I thought it was going to be like the Elysian Fields. He like comes out, like <laughs> the music starts playing. Talk, talk happy. Yeah, yeah okay. It, it has everything, everything he needs. <laughs> we, are, we are hitting every emotional fucking beat this episode. It's all right. He's out of the way. So now I can't destroy him. So it's fine. Well, now, now that Glove Talk is gone, uh, we, we can move on to more pressing matters like Orin's PTSD. Really? No, we can deal. We can deal with that later. Put him in the creature cage too. I, I no. cannot put him in there. He is not <laughs> small yeah. enough. Yeah. 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 Come on, yeah. man! Yeah. Yeah. I cast. I cast. I throw an enfeebling potion at him to make him smaller. Yeah. <laughs> now, oh God. Oh, the complications. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Um, yeah. So so Glub Talk disappears into. Uh, into your your shadowy dimension, um, your your tree dimension, uh, Oren. I believe you were uh, you were going to to rest at this point, correct? Yep, Oren's okay. trying to sleep. Okay. Um, th th at this point, I think you can all um, like generally manage a a a good night of rest. But um, with that being said, uh, as 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 you have you have. Like, well, okay, sorry. Who's all going to sleep? Is anyone staying up? Staying up. Baldrick is staying up because be. he's got work. Okay. Rahu will be awake. He's going to be observing Orin for a little bit, assuming that he can't sleep. Okay. He, he does want to talk with him, but he also doesn't want to. <laughs> Rahu is standing over him. Orin's back is turned, facing into the couch. He's like, <laughs> I can't see him. Rahu is standing there. I wish to talk to him. <laughs> it's like you're just seeing the perspective it's like Orin's face is terrified as his giant eye glows is staring at him I wish to talk to him I have very important things to say to Orin but I will wait until he is fully rested before I say anything oh my god he keeps talking <laughs> Orin just having a nightmare about Ruhua stuffing him into a garbage disposal <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, I love the abomination. That movie the sucks. Dimension. Wait, I'm going to I want to roll to see if I have a nightmare similar to that. Thank you, Alpha Busa. <laughs> oh, you you made right. a mark on this table. Right. Sure. Fuck. Give me a We're making a 75% chance. If it's past, okay. if it's 75 or higher, I have bad nightmares. Okay, do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um I'm Gosh, having you, an, uh, I'm having an issue. You uh you have you you know what? You experience the same thing that Club Talk did. You go you go into this tree. It's it's like spaced well enough for you. It's safe. It's it's confined but enough that you can like have your wings <laughs> out. There's there's like the the nice little straw mat on the floor. There's there's food nearby. This you're safe. There's only one entrance here. Like you'll finally be able to rest to not deal with anything. It's really strange that the viney growth roots are now covering the only exit and then the faces begin to appear on the wood first half a dozen then a dozen <laughs> then hundreds of the blank faces staring at you no! as the entire room is engulfed in darkness, but somehow you can still see the faces. No! And then one of them no! is Rahua. No! I wish to talk to him. I don't know. You okay? Few hours of, of that. Uh, yeah, Orin will will eventually awaken. But before that, uh, Tannhauser, uh, Rahua, Baldrick, and Vali. If you're if you're staying up, like, are there any discussions you're having as Orin's having this uh, this nightmare? No, Baldrick's Baldrick is making potions. I'd okay. like to have a conversation with Vali. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yeah, yeah I'm you gonna agree. sit between Tannhauser and Rahua kind of like still nursing uh the coffee looking uh a little worse for wear um I, at this i have probably at one point or another gone through baldrick's cabinets when he isn't looking to look for liquor in case he's lying to me about not having any you do not find the liquor <sighs> damn him for being straight edge just Plop down between them, probably sitting uh, on the other ramshackle couch. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's kind of this like awkward moment as like Orin is like tossing and turning, attempting to sleep, having the weird tree dream, and then there is you, Rahua, and Tannhauser. Uh Crunch has gone back to the to the other the other place. Uh and do ha- actually, um Crunch has escorted Duhakis back to uh, the Cackling Jackass to acquire the necessary uh, books. Yes. But this gives you you all some time to, to discuss what, what you want to talk about. Volley, Tannhauser, and Rahul. I'm going to talk... They're going to talk about boys. Volley. Yeah, of course. True. <laughs> what? How are you holding up? I'm... <laughs> Everything you say always sounds so threatening. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm... I've been better. I can imagine. But... For the first time I've seen it. All right. Is it... I'm Don't. sorry, your first experience has to be so intimate. Mm. Yeah. Where I'm from, we, uh... choose not to deal with it, really. Well, that's wise. How do you get away with not dealing with it? We don't touch the ground. It's where the rod is, after all on the ground and the seas, but it hasn't gotten to the skies yet. Hmm. That's right. You were a sky pirate. For a little bit. But... Well... Can't really be much of a sky pirate without... a ship. And that thing's... probably long gone halfway across the continent by now long gone do you mean I would have thought it would have been impounded or destroyed no no I was the only one left in Alsa it was a mutiny A mutiny against you. Against me. So, I get tossed out here, on the ground, and the second my feet are on the earth, this shit happens. I can't speak to the hospitality of the sky. But the Earth is a very grim and dark place. Yeah. But I'm sure, with work and time, it could be as hospitable as the brightest spot above the clouds. This revolution's for? To be quite honest with you, Farley, I believed you were just entertaining me. Are you serious about backing me up when I talk about revolution? Um, okay, yeah. In a way, in another, I'm not really sure. Don't really know what all it entails. It's... It's something I haven't ever really put a lot of thought into. Until now. What life is like for the people down here. I had thought that... They were smart, they'd do what we did. Keep building up and up and up until... Everything's off the ground and the rots... Far below it all. to say, but that's what they did, and our duty is to bring them crashing back into the dirt. 
can only maintain your vaunted independence, your vaunted castles in the sky, off the labor of those who toil below the clouds. They weren't exactly castles, but I get what you mean. I was speaking metaphorically. I'm sure your crews of bandits were a altogether different sort. But while I can't speak on the specifics of your mutineers, I can say that perhaps this is a opportunity for you. A new oscillation of your adventurous reputation. Surprisingly wise coming from you. I'll be honest, I didn't really think you actually had anything in mind when it came to your revolution. I admit... I am rather less composed than I appear. Improvisation is a powerful tool, but I am no brute. So you're gonna wing it? Wing the revolution? Absolutely not. But in these early stages, things are rather discordant. The intent is to build up a power base. Once we've built up a power base, once we've gained things that traffic movement of people of industry of power and will we can change through force or through words but most likely through force i am no genius of revolution but i had a marvelous teacher Mention. That teacher of yours, didn't they? That, um... That guy. The one at the cackling jackass. It spilled from his lips like acid or sludge. I have great affection for that woman. And what happened? Well, what happens to all bright ideas and fronts of hope, the ones that meet this city with open arms and joyous expectations are crushed beneath the weight of outset. She's long past, but oh. I owe very much to her, and I will see her work concluded. Hmm. And who is just standing here? Yeah, I'm okay. He's just taking it in. He's just, he's giving him space to talk. What he's sitting around. Rua. I mean, you've said yourself that you're uh, still pretty new to all this. Now that you, now that you're swept up in all this sponsorship, this rot, this revolution, all of this crazy bullshit happening in this city. What are you here for? Huh? Oh, it's the cops! It, oh no, that's what we're here for. Oh no. The tyrant's guilt! <laughs> Rua, you're a fed! We know it! That question, what am I here for, is something that I have been asked many times in my brief existence, at least in this form. And one I find asking myself as well. Though I am told that there are others like me out there, Konrasu as they are known, there is one strand of familiarity that I know between us, in that we ourselves are as enigmatic to the common people of this world as we are to ourselves. What greater mystery is there then, then? What purpose do we serve? No, we are not sky pirates or scholars of revolutionary renown. We have no overt 
purpose, I suppose. For why we come to be. I mean, we are that of what surrounds us. The children of all existence. And I think my travels with a friend of mine, though you never knew him, have given me the chance to begin learning what exactly I am meant to do in this world. Part of that has been, I suppose, finding the beauty in, well, everything that there is. The purpose of existence in and of itself I have not yet deemed, or maybe a purpose overall to all existence. But I do know that as an agent of something far beyond myself, the anarchy outlying and underpinning all things, that I am an agent of change. Whether that be taking down a corrupt government or simply ushering on a new generation of plants from its previous and making something new out of what there wasn't before. That change sustains me, and for good or for ill, I am no less an agent of that change as I am the change itself. So I hope to find my purpose with all of you in time. But unfortunately, I have little answer in terms of, well, what I am to be now, right now. Who Certainly are. this, uh, yes. You make me feel foolish. A creature How so? like you that comes to exist in this place. You should be the subject of great marvel. There should be joy in your education, in what we can learn from you and you from us. But instead, like all things, I feel your desire to be an avatar of change will lead you down my path, the path of all things in this world. The path of blood and iron. While cities may rise and fall, and great fields of grass may give rise to pillars of alabaster and great wars of untold gore and conquest, in time, blood, iron, fire, sweat, and even the end of time itself will give rise to those same green fields once again. It is not my place to necessarily educate others on the state of things or to advocate for one type of change or over another. If that is the way things are to be, then well, things must take their form in time. And such is such it is that things must live and die like like our good friend Dr. Krim, but and looking over to Vali and hopefully sleeping Orin. Not yeah, everything. Or, Orin's, Orin's in the absolute worst throes of the nightmare now. Yeah. It is not to say that all things that do end are meant to. I've and I'm not sure if you'll understand by saying this, but I have sensed something beyond what one may feel when witnessing something else perish from this mortal coil, much as one might butcher a chimkin in a shop for today's <laughs> meal. I am removed from the same societal struggles as that you or, or Baldrick may face, but I still feel some level of kinship towards all of you in some way, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Point being, these two, their, their world lines are not meant to end what they did. And where the rot has seeped in as well just and opens more questions than it does answers, as far as sponsorship, life, and death not being as quite as defined as they may be. It's... It fills me with wonder. It's as strange as it may be to say. And it's an answer that we will all arrive at in time, and I hope to find that answer with all of you. That is why I appreciate you as my companions. 
I am not one with an eye for wonder, nor Baltric. As distinct as we are, we are both men of metal, cut from the same forge. But yourself, Ali, Oren, you three are not so jaded. When you see something new, your first instinct is not first how to weaponize it. Your eyes are unclouded. I do not think revolution could exist without dreamers as yourselves. The door is knocked on. I got it. I'm a, I'm a bit of a nut. Because during the entire serious, serious discussion, I'm just imagining fucking Brembo just floating in the sky, passing by, <gasps> yelling "Oh my God!" the entire time as his fucking well, homunculus self. I want to point out, Volley is about to make the biggest blunder because <laughs> don't open the door, fucker! Don't do that. <laughs> well, I'm gonna don't peep know. out. You, I assume you have a peephole, Mister Paranoid. He does. I'm going to peek out the peephole. I'm going to peek. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, you see what appears to be, like, you see hair, like a bundle of hair that's like bobbing in the peep, the peephole. <sighs> bundle of hair? Yeah, like, like, like maybe like a top knot from someone. We're not expecting guests, are we? Perhaps you should ask Baldrick who is preparing things. Come on, I know you're in there. Let me in. I'm not decent. I don't care if you're decent. Wait, that's that's not you, Baldrick. Um, and you recognize the voice for uh for from cousin Ginnebrin. The, the dwarf uh, who ran the clinic nearby, who is a uh, worshipper of the bishop. Oh. I swing open the door, peek my head out. Ah, uh, your uh, uh, it cousin. It was you. I knew it. Yes. Y y y y she, like, brusquely walks in. Uh, okay. Uh, Baldric, visitors. It's the... The workshop is so <laughs> you give him a fucking aneurysm? <laughs> the wor the workshop evolution compound. <laughs> <laughs> the workshop quarters. How can I take your order? The workshop is soundproofed. And by the way, you guys are doing a bad job of this. <laughs> we, we know Ginnebrin. We, we, we all know our, our, our good cousin. Yeah, I'm going to like bang on the, the workshop door. Are you what? looking for Baldrick, or are you here to talk to somebody else? I'm, I'm here to talk to all of you. I, I, Baldrick, I just knew this was... You are awful <laughs> conspicuous. Half the district saw the, the red bicycle, was it, is coming down? I want 12 episodes later for the, for the fucking Tyrant Scale to find the place and sack it while we're here or some other shit, and everyone's gonna go, how the fuck did they find it? I don't know. <laughs> oh, Erndale is gonna know exactly how this happened because he tries to make things sneaky, but everyone else runs around like it's not a problem. I, be I believe Tannhauser specifically painted it in red and put a horn on it, so, you know. <laughs> you fool! I wasn't attempting conspicuousness. I was attempting to create a symbol that even while the hunt went on, the revolution could not be stopped. And it was. Uh, <laughs> what a revolution poster with the fucking shitty red painted bicycle on it. <laughs> the symbol! <laughs> So just so you know, oh, Baldrick is going to push open his door after unlatching it and immediately belt out a series of, like, curse words at them. You guys need to quiet the fuck down right now. He's, he's going to curse a lot more than that, but you oh, know what I mean. It's you, Baldrick. Good, you're here. Um, I guess you should get Bird Boy up for this, too. How about you just explain? And how exactly did you get in? points to Vali. She let me in. Okay, Vali. Oh, here we go. Don't do that. 
Oh, cousin Ginnabra, whatever. <laughs> he holds his hands up like, you don't want me to get into it, so I'm just going to say don't do it. All right. Oh, you're one big Fine, happy family, Dad. aren't you? Ginny, what do you want? Call me Ginny again. Oh, well. Uh, Keep it up. I'll throw a thunderstone at you. What do you want? Uh, well, uh, it's 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 the martinet and everything that's going on. And uh, I, 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 they, they, they were they were looking for you, but no one's no one's willing to give you up yet. But I, looks like the hunt's over now. Uh, the the Iron Baron that was tearing through here, it's it's headed back to the Baron's Palaster, along with a sizable contingent of hangers-on. Terrific. This is precisely why I don't hang out with a lot of people. Less people to get interrogated. Well... Ideally. But, uh... I guess... I guess during that, there was some, some invites sent out to to some of the uh, the locals who uh, they they do work with the the tyrants guild and uh well they they were invited to the derg uh Baldrick, you would know the the derg derg is a common term that is used for like a tyrants guild base of operations essentially yeah so uh, the local one would be uh derg sanren house uh, I, I think we discussed this in the uh, post tavern episode, but I, I do remember. Yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Just, just reminding. Um, <laughs> reminding the chat, but yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, Derg. Uh, well, she, the Martinet invited a bunch of people to the Derg. I guess uh, there was supposed to be some kind of gala, but, but since the hunt uh, was happening, she invited every all the guests in advance. Damn it! Uh, but that's the thing. No one's, no one's left there yet. And honestly, most of the most of the most of the, the guild members are back there yet. It's strange. She she let go of almost all of her staff. Hmm. I'm either expecting a good old Baron's Blaster culling, or something else is going on. I, I don't know. All, all I all I know is strange it's 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 not normal and it's, you you know cardoza she's a brutal one so i'm so i can be on the safe side because baldrick is not the kind to like assume everyone's lying to him but he's totally going to yeah. like see if she's lying to him yeah you can give me a perception check to see what you know like notice visually and such okay i will do that i will give that. you a 15 a fifteen. Um, you're you're not noticing anything. Um, like she she seems to be definitely concerned. You're not noticing any like sense of deception or whatnot. However, what you what you do like feel is kind of a niggling comment. Is you're you're right in that uh, Martinet Cardoza, who's the the sort of local leader of the Tyrants Guild in this part of the uh, the Ponce Palaster district. Um, is is notorious for being some somewhat of a like brutal uh, martinet, even by the standards of the of the the tyrants guild. Like, has little room for 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 concepts like love or mercy, um, and that like you think back to that letter, and, and definitely something is is seeming off as you think about it. So either something's gotten into her, she's putting up one hell of a front. And I don't particularly like either option, so... Let me think about this. Now my option's not going to be ready until... Well, I was going to plan it until the day before the gala, but... Eh. Damn them! Do we have well, any status on the venue? It's, 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 it's as unguarded as it's... It's been in in ages. It's like it's, it's like the Martinet told most of the most of the guild members to go home. There, there's some, I think, some some abasers I saw. Well, I heard were were patrolling the perimeter from people who went by. But all right. 
This then raises the question. If she's not holding everyone there, and no basers are watching out save for the very scant that are there, then where are they? They think they're still there. They just haven't left the inside. Uh, can you give me, uh, if you have it, and I think Tannhauser, you would too, can you give me a society? And then as does anyone else who has society! Not society? A secure! Monetary I'll give you a 25. Got a society. Society! Oh, I'll give you a 25. Dice roll? Ooh, you know uh, I got a society. You did not. You did not dice roll. Gotta oh, reload! Yeah. yeah, gotta reload. You're not even in here. Yeah, you are not. You, you disappeared dead. on us. Oh, I must died. Have disconnected. You poisoned yeah. yourself. You're rot five now. You're gone. Goodbye. You're I just rot. explode. You're just a poodle of rot. A poodle? A, a poodle? poodle? A rot poodle. Volley for Sona moments. Wow. No. I, gotta, I gotta go. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> Bye. Great play with everyone. I gotta go. Okay. Roll your dice. No, no, okay. We got a three. Nice. All, that for a, all that for a three and a nine. Okay. <laughs> um, Tannhauser, uh, you would uh, have enough to, to know that, like, what they're talking about, uh, Derek Sandrin House is the, the, the local um, establishment uh, of the Tyrant's Guild by Martin at Cardoza. <laughs> Baldric, however, this makes sense because you've also been, like, probably at odds with this woman for a while. Uh, Derek Sandrin House uh, is located at the edge of the sinkhole and is, is noted for its galas because... It has a small prison complex in its basement level, um, jutting out of which is a supported bridge which goes over the um, the sinkhole. And the gala room on the main floor of the derg has a um, transparent glass fresco that nobles watch from as people are essentially walked off this bridge and tossed into the sinkhole. So they yeah. have their, their their fun noble galas and, and discussions as people are essentially pushed into the bottomless pit to their deaths. Yeah. That's Dev. So. Ultimately, if they're going to be holding it there, but they haven't moved anyone yet, then that means that they're not exactly expecting anything. Unless they think they've culled everything. Hey, there go the cops. Thanks, asshole. So if they're not expecting anything, they must think they've already gotten someone. Well, they didn't get you, and I, I just... I, I wanted to pass this along because I thought you'd want to know. Right. It's appreciated, but now it throws my old plan out of whack. But that's fine. I, I can't be seen here much longer. I've I've got to get going, but you're right. You do. Just just know that the district has has your back. Well, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a real risky proposition if I screw up. So, well, don't screw up. I want to see you at my clinic as soon as you're done. And she like turns and walks off. Hmm. All right, goodbye. And she, like, opens the door and, like, sneaks out. Well, that throws At this point, uh, Oren, you wake up screaming. Ah! I, throw a thun I, throw, I throw an alchemist fire at him to kill him. Okay. Attack roll, please. <laughs> and then the, then the flames hit all of your alchemicals and you all die. And then no, the I, I immediately... Gideburn turns back and is panicked. Good. Finally. <laughs> Uh, Baldrick is going to lean over and grab one of the uh, the smooth pillows, and he begins immediately trying to suffocate Orin. Ah, uh, hey! Jeez, hang up this helmet. Get back! Or who will get quiet? On stop too. screaming! Wait, stop! Stop! Stop trying to kill him! I'm trying to keep him quiet. All right, Orin, it's okay. It's okay. Orin, it's okay. Orin is scrambled off the couch into a corner somewhere, like he. Like just ready, to like 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 the flick out of produce flame somewhere. <laughs> Baldrick, listen. I know that you are very, very serious about all of this. You've been an outset for a very long time, and I know you probably know what you're doing. But cool it. 
I'm on edge. We're not a liability. All right? I'll remember that, but I'll believe it for now. Oh, can it. Hey, Listen, who's do you want to work in? with us or don't you? I is, don't. Clunk, clunk, is everything okay in there? I heard yelling. And I, I, I've got my hammer and I'm... I'm Shut the fuck up, Crunch! Oh, okay. Now, you are so lucky we have to be quiet or I would be yelling at you. Look, Mr. Bodrick, I'm... I'm sorry, okay? Just, 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 just it's fine. Don't apologize. Just... Ugh. Baldrick is not used to having this many people being annoyed with him in his own home. I know, it's the best. <laughs> it's so good, the evolution. I know. The difference is we're not trying to kill him. Yes. Even if you're going to get him killed. That's the difference. It hasn't Billy. happened yet. Hasn't happened yet. I'm going to I'm going to knock both your heads together in real life when we meet the door. <laughs> The door hold like, you to slowly it. opens as Crunch comes in with the Duhakis. I, I, I have the skull. And I, I'm sorry for the for the loud. Get in! Ah, hello. Okay, I've got three three additional tombs here. I, I'm going to look at them all. And and Baldrick is, is, is sprinting over to I, the door, and he will quietly shut I, it and I, lock it. I imagine there's a couple of tyrants guild cops just in their car, <laughs> just like Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> or whatever. Like, ah, yeah, it seems you got two more going in there. Ah, it's a really successful stakeout so far. It took him like a minute to <laughs> reveal their location. <laughs> All right, we'll just call the boys I in just, and get if back it, up. If it, it wasn't for that bird boy screaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah you put, uh, we want to be able to notice him during our lunch break. <laughs> <laughs> our lunch break in the middle of the night. You know, they're on the night shift. Should we report this? No, union time is up. We get to go home. We can do it uh, tomorrow. Ah, yes, yes. We pay our dues, so we don't gotta do the paperwork. You know, Baldrick hey, has people screaming. Off. He's had the sounds of fighting coming from the basement of the building next to him. He has had fucking all kinds of crap happen, and it's like, you should really be nicer to Orin. Baldrick, you live in Outset. This shit is yeah. happening in every other house on this block. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want to get an. He doesn't want to have a welfare check or a bad fair check. You think there's a welfare check? Sit outside. No, that's why I corrected myself. There's a, there's also a bad fair check. They're here to make sure you're a not welfare check. Oh, I no. think the welfare Malfare check in, yeah. in Outset is the chainsaw car. <laughs> they don't. Hello, time are you dead right or are you dying? No, we you are will be. We're performing an ill fair check. We want to make sure you're not doing okay. <laughs> If you're doing Gav? okay, stop it. Oh, you got your screaming license, Gav. <laughs> you have oh, you got a, you you got a permit, permit for those screams. A permit for those screams. Fucking outside homeowners associations would be the worst. Absolutely. <laughs> if, if they can see your trash can from the street, yeah. they drive a car through your home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they'll find you, a, then they'll fucking fine you for having debris on your lawn. <laughs> yes, fine. This anyway, HOA. HOA. HOA hate aside, <laughs> Baldrick has locked up the front door and he has ushered both of them in. And he is just like gesticulating a little bit annoyed at them like, all right, what is it now? Uh, uh, well, well, we, we, we travel back to the cackling uh, jackass location. Uh, yes, yes, we, 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 uh, it was, it was still quite, quite, quite locked up. Luckily, I had a key because the only other one that's Dr. Crim and Miss, Mr. Duchel, ah, uh, that, that wasn't good. Uh, we did hear some, some, some fun things along the way, though, didn't we, Crunch? And like, Crunch, oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Um, there, there was a, there was an older fellow out front who was, uh, very, very much, uh, desiring some, I believe, uh, tendies, they were called. He, uh, mm, yes, uh, which was, uh, was looking for some, some foodstuffs, but we had to uh, break the news to him that the, the establishment was uh, un, under uh, repairs for a while. Crunch? Yes. yes. I want to ask you with every fiber of my being. Yes. Please, please get to the point. Oh, yes, of course, of course, of course. Well, so, uh, this this older fellow had, had told us that I suppose the hunt had uh, done a fair bit of a rough and tumble on those um, children of the of the blaze individuals. Um, and, uh, well, they have uh, appeared, uh, 
been dispersed through in the district. Uh, whether they've all been detained or defeated, I, I can't say, but it seems that uh, whatever's happened has destabilized their criminal organization for quite some time. Okay. Yes, it was very interesting. And then I got in and I got my books. Now, I have several to tomes here that, that uh, tomes that detailed information on, on all the, the old powers and sponsorship and where we might find some more. Uh, restorative measures for our friends here. Uh, now, um, I'm going to need this kitchen counter. Uh, one sec here. And she, like, drops the, the, the books down. All right. Good, good, good. Now, uh, I'll, I'll begin in my research, but it'll take me a few days, I think. So, uh, go on. Do, do whatever it is you need to do. All right. Okay. And where are you going to be resting? Well, I, uh, there's a couch there. I'll, I'll be fine. So don't don't mind me. It's like I'm not even here. Terrific. All right. So let's open up the first page. All right. Introduction. Oh, that's lovely. And look at the font here. It's it's really nice. Well, while the old lady who is actually very young uh, continues to waffle through her book. Yes. Can, <laughs> Can we like? Come to a decision on what we're doing at this point. Since the yeah. plan was originally to attack the frickin' gala, but now it is it has changed its approach. So now I feel it would be a great time to work out that plan. That, that is true. Do okay. I just want to say you're welcome in our house at a time. Oh, th thank you very much, Robert. <laughs> Good. Well, that's what we're trying to do. We can, well, we can start doing a scouting mission around where we think the gala might be held after we get that information to see exactly where it's going to be at what date. Before we do any scouting, I think it is important for us to narrow down our objectives. We need the elimination of this individual. Right. Martin does need to go. So, as, as, a, as a clarification, the, the gala, uh, all of the attendees of the gala have already been brought into the Dirk, uh, but they have not left yet. And that's Precisely. what is somewhat raising the, the sort of, like, mystery here. So, you like, you could assume the gala is going on right now, question mark, uh, but... It appears they have been there for quite longer than a regular gala would take. Yeah, that's what I mean. Is like he wants, he's assuming that the gala has come and gone, so he's plotting a different target. Well, it seems like it's still in progression. Yeah, it seems like, like the, the people are headed. there. They never left, um, and that the the derg like is is kind of bereft of the usual contingent of guards it would have because of the hunt. No. Baldrick, this is a genius opportunity. Explain. Because the hunt has maladjusted the garden ratio, and because the gala is still going on, my initial objections to a wide open destruction of the gala are now moot. Numerous people will be freshly mourning the loss of their loved ones. The hunt was cruel, vicious, and clearly unfocused. But. An enormous symbol like the destruction of this gala or even the assassination of its organizer will be a tremendous blow to the morale of pro-guild forces in the area, as well as a rallying point for potential revolutionaries. It would be, however, I don't have my option ready. I don't have the materials necessary to detonate the whole damn building or bring it down. Then well, we break in. When the old, well... The, the thing I've been trying to do is try to find where my friend Gorkamarga has been held, and one of those nobles might know. What? Yeah, that's... It's one of the things I've came here to the city for, is find my old friend. Yeah. He was... The problem is, is that that's exactly the issue, is we were going in so we could learn information and then destroy it. The problem is if we're just going in to learn information and leave it intact, that's a different issue. I'd rather well, not leave them resources. We break in quietly, we assassinate Cardoza, we get the information we need, and then we get out. 
You go to the Winchester and wait for it all to blow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're gonna go back to Baldrick's house and wait for it to all blow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can certainly stay behind and look after uh, uh, the, 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 the fair maiden suite and um, our, our our scholarly guest. I, I yeah. promise it on the honor of Legibet. It is likely for the best. We are the uh, I'm not very stealthy, and, and if I fall over, I'm, I'm rather... Oh, I, it's a bit difficult I to have get an out. idea. Yep. Mr. Tannhauser. Yes. Have you been around that particular area before? Have I? I've seen the building. Like, it's it's around the edge of the sinkhole. It's a, like, a, a very large fortress, so... Um, it, it's notable. Uh, and he'll also ask Mr. Bodderly, have you been around there before, too? Uh, would I have been? Um, yes, you, you've seen the frontage of the place. To give you, like, a rough idea, it's about 140 feet of frontage, uh, with, like, a primary entrance. Um, there's only one primary entrance to the building, except for, like, some access points along the sinkhole, but you'd have to, like, go down and into it through the basement sort of thing. I've cased it a couple times, and I've tried to figure out avenues to get inside, but... Ultimately, I haven't learned too much. I and I wasn't exactly there, planning on being stealthy. Is there a very high point that could overlook it, or, well, the point what I'm getting at is, I can't exactly fly just yet, but I could definitely glide with safety. And if I need no. to bring down like a rope ladder or at least pass over it and get in a lay of it, I could definitely help that way. Uh, Thurston, what would I do about that? But you would know that, like the the building itself, you might be able to get on top. But it but it doesn't have any um, doesn't have any like glass entry points or anything along that those lines. It does have a um, a fairly large uh, window that overlooks the um, that the like overlooks the the sinkhole. But that would like th there's no way you're realistically going to get in there unless you do something crazy like get on the roof and then like send a rope down and then blow the glass and go inside which I'm regretting suggesting already because it is it is possible you're just telling us what to do I just no 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 no, 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 no. Uh, the, it's it's incredibly like d dangerous so essentially your options are you could try to enter in through that like that glass space you could try to come in through like a main entrance or you could uh, try to come in from like deeper in the sinkhole. There's sort of like pathways that lead into the basement level. So Baldrick's gonna really quickly go back into his workshop and retrieve a rolled up parchment that he had previously ordained a plan on. Mm hmm. All right. So if we're appending this plan, I may as well get started now. He just pulls out a lump of charcoal with which he can write with. Okay, so here, he lays out the paper and shows basically a rough estimation of the 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 grounds, not barring anything he couldn't see. Do you course. have any skill checks uh, that you would like to make posthumously um, to represent, like, your casing of this place? Uh, yes, engineering. Absolutely. fucking lootly um, Plaus to be giving me a check on that front um i will give you a 26. okay that is really good i'm gonna do something uh something wild and wacky here one sec oh he's gonna give me the ability to draw uh kind of one sec this just might take a moment but it'll be i think it'll be good yeah you can uh Give him permission to draw and then put a parchment tile if you have a parchment ah. PNG on hand and he can draw over it. Uh, anyway, Chet, how are you guys doing? Yeah, I'm going to do something a bit different here. Let's drink anything good lately? Drink anything drinkable lately? Drink any poison drink lately? Any liquids? Liquids? Okay. Liquids? Liquid? 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 Brown liquid? Okay. Alex, stop drinking your orange juice. I mean, it's good that you're doing it. It gives you good vitamin C, but you got to stop. It's very acidic. Yeah, I got to yeah. quit. My I roommate telling away. me in the chat that he keeps drinking his orange juice. Put it put yeah. it in the plant, and it'll kill the plant. The liquid. Yeah. 
So burn it live. Pour it on Rahua. Rahua dies. Don't do it. I will die. I will drink your liquids and I will die. Yeah. All right. You gonna um, do that? I'm. This won't work particularly well for everyone else, but it'll work well for uh, Baldric and um, and and Zorin, which are the two important ones. So one sec. Great. I know. You guys just watch the stream. Just watch the yeah, stream. Well, watch, <laughs> yeah, well, watch the stream for this. this Get on the like, stream! This is uh, this is absolutely the like, the the, the video game esque sequence of like, all right, so this is how it's gonna go down. All right, um, so. Okay, we're gonna test this out. We're gonna test this out. Oh God, this. Okay, okay. I'm in the map. Okay, you should be in the map. All right, Valdrick. This is this is the knowledge you have on this structure. It Let has an entryway. Uh, everyone here, I want to do a virtual camera for our Discord. <laughs> I, I really like that you're, you're saying this is what I know, and it's just like a cone of vision. It's a cone of vision, but you should, if you zoom out, you can like you can there actually you move your token around in here. This I know is it's representing difficult. your knowledge. Yeah, yeah. For of you course. speaker Noto, uh, you can just look at yeah. the webcam thing on Discord. Yep. Very good. So I assume this is the glass area up here. Yes. Yeah, so that overlooks the um, that overlooks the sinkhole. Okay. So, so, and I'll open these doors too, just so you have them open. This is the the sort of area that you have mapped out. There are side doors, but you have not mapped any of them out. There is a set of stairs that leads upwards to what is essentially a balcony that goes to a second level above here. Okay. So, with my knowledge of engineering, mm -hmm. uh, obviously this place needs some kind of, I would assume, some kind of sewage control, yes? Mm-hmm. So, the or plan... Or send their shit right into, uh, right into the sinkhole. I would assume right that the nobles do not squat over the edge and take a dump. That's true, that's true. I'm about to say, it's like, there has to be some level of sewage inflow or outflow. Would I have been able to see this? Um, yeah, you would know that there is like outflow, like small outflow pipes that just jut out way further down um, that like go just dump the excrement into the sinkhole. Okay. So Baldrick's plan mm -hmm. was not to go through the sewer, but rather to damage it heavily. Okay. Uh, his plan would have been to come by the sewer hole, but ideally by like, you know, either, you know, climbing around near it or like into it for a short distance and then collapsing it. That would have been phase one. Now, naturally, you can't just tell people at a very large gala, oh, just don't shit. Right? That's, I mean, probably going to be a problem with all the people who are attending them. That would have been his original plan, yes. So naturally, they would have to find an alternative solution somehow, or they would have to unblock it very quickly. Now, where this leads into the rest of his plan, while all the people are possibly freaking out from the rumbling or the what have you of a vital piece of infrastructure, he would then re, you know, displace himself somewhere else while they go and investigate the damage. While this is happening, that would, of course, have diverted guards away. While people are still figuring that out, he sabotages another key element. Namely, well, presumably there would be a kitchen. He would have to find it when he actually manages to get in, because he doesn't know where it is normally, right? Yeah, oh, nice, Tannhauser's you'd, here. You'd, you'd have to figure that out. Guys, look, it's Tannhauser. He's, He's on your map. Tannhauser. Get off my get out of my plan. <laughs> I'm not it's here. your boy, Tannhauser. There's fire! There's steam! There's fire! There's steam! I have a plan. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I just is like as you're like delivering this fucking like, alright, so I'm gonna move around this building, and suddenly <laughs> Tannhauser appears in this like mock-up, and the building's just on fire. <laughs> it's like it's like in your own calculation of plans, you're calculating how Tannhauser will ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so naturally with the destruction of the sewer main, they would also probably get a good, what's the word I'm looking for? A good waft 
of everything. And that would, of course, send people probably sprawling out of the location. Correct? Seems reasonable. Seems reasonable. However, his plan at that point would be to cause even more chaos and destroy the front door. This this lovely door down here to the south. Correct. The front okay. door there. Yeah. This would trap everyone in, freaking mm -hmm. out, wigging out, because they obviously know that they are under attack at this point. Mm -hmm. Again, this is the plan prior to them, like, you know, the party showing up. Yeah, of course, of course. This was this was like the, the beautiful master plan you had. There's Metal Gear music playing to this, too. So presumably they are all like trying to find alternative solutions out. So he will be monitoring different locations to see where they come out of. And then ideally, if it is a secret enough location or like maybe just one of the nobility is trying to eke out, he can try to find a way in through no doubt one of the many ways in or out of this facility. Because he's, he's creating an, a method by which someone needs to leave and is blocking the main way for them to get out. That is not also hurling themselves through a window, because I don't think nobles would do that. Would that be a fair assumption to make, Thurston? I, I think this was a solid plan up until recently. Well, I can't worry about that. The second <laughs> the second part is then getting in, and then if he had the time, he would have prepared uh, an alternative option for bringing down the structure and everyone in it. So naturally, this does leave us the opportunities of finding an alternative entrance or exit, because naturally a building would not have just one entrance unless this is an OSHA violation. And also the fact that the sewer can be interacted with in some way. The option I... of sneaking in. We did get that hat of disguise. I have a means in which we could sneak in. Or at least a select few of us. And how would that be? I'm going to spend my hero point and reveal that from the struggle, the dead guard, there's only one of the actual members of the Tyrant's Guild that died, right? Yep. Well, there's a couple of mooks as well that we The mook, the abasers, yeah, yeah. During all of that, Tannhauser had covertly came to possess their facial masks during the yeah. cleanup and during the process giving them the facial equipment of the Tyrant's Guild. Yeah, like pull out like five masks. Yeah. I think I think uh, that is a great uh, narrative declaration. I'm easily capable of impersonating a Tyrant's Guild leader, and all but Rahua will likely naturally fit in. But then that's where the Hat of Disguise comes in. Rahua can use magical means to seem as though we are reinforcements. We came from the hunting party. We are all Tyrant's Guild abasers, and we are here to provide personal guard. They will appraise us of the situation, most specifically me, the leader of the group. And then we will use that to enhance and infiltrate the defenses, gain access to the personal guard of this unfortunate tyrant, and eliminate her. Sounds fair enough. We can utilize your exploration of the sewers to create chaos to allow us to escape. But it is very important, since it is unlikely we can execute everyone in our lovely get-together, that we make a show of her slaying. I was planning on making a big enough show of it, but that's probably not going to happen. I'll just have to use it on something else later down the line. Right. But I get your point. Excellent. No. And I spin a good lie. I like this plan. Excellent. I've, uh, done the infiltration into a party thing before, though mine was on a boat. Boat. On a boat. On a boat. Well, I regret to inform. I regret to inform you it is neither in the air nor on the water, so you'll just have to it's make It's the do. same general principle. Have you ever been to a fancy party, Baldrick? Have Once. you ever sabotaged a fancy party from the inside? It's no. very fun. I have been to one exactly once, and then never again. I have really? a question. Hmm? Yes, Arden. Does the Tyrant's Guild discriminate in terms of ancestry? 
because yes. my wings will be an issue. They do not. Valtric will lie and say, yes, they are very racist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah. at that point, I, I think it'll be more effective because I, I don't think I can really talk my way out of the stuff. I think it'll be better for, like, reconnaissance. I can, you know, just keep up on the rooftops or transform into things to keep an eye out on stuff. If you can turn into something little, we, I can keep you in my coat. I can turn into a bug or a little mi- mouse. Here we go. I have a wall. You'll well, be Bald- a scout. Baldrick's underhanded attempt to not have Orin try to blend in with the Tyrant's Guild. It's like, uh, Orin, our, like our like undercover operative. Oh, <laughs> uh, dude, I love murdering civilians. Yeah. Yeah, man, I fucking yeah. love it when we, like, uh, I don't know, Guantanamo Bay and shit. Dude, I fucking love like, Castro. All right, all right, all right. On the mention of Guantanamo Bay and shit for the time to go. I'm going to commit that. a microaggression. Speaker ruined it. I'm going to cry I now. I think that's where we're going to call today's session <laughs> and look forward to our next session where, you know, we have a fancy map that we just saw a bit of. Maybe we'll see more of it, and maybe there'll be some things that'll happen. Mm. We'll discuss next time next on. Time. Ocean's Eleven Rot Grind Explosion Edition. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> and with that, we're gonna start start heading out of it. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. First off, we're gonna sound everybody off. Everything else, starting off with Odo. Hello, it was me, Odo Roshi Rider. You can find me on Twitter at Odo Roshi Rider. Um, thank you very much for coming today. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was very very emotional, and also. The bicycle. the bicycle. I'm gonna need to recover from the whiplash. The bicy- oh. Bicycle by Queen starts playing. I want to <laughs> ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. <laughs> Next off, we have Orki Kro. That's me. You can find me at the usual socials at Hulky Crow on Twitter. It's the same spelling as it is here. Or you can find me on the Narrative Declaration Discord server because I'm also the community manager there. I yeah. hang out a lot with our fans here. We try to pop in when we can. We're all pretty busy people, but it's always very nice to talk with all of you. You're wonderful. I've met a lot of great people through there, too. Uh, yeah, by all means, pop by. We'd love to have you there. Next up, and... I'm Erndil. You can meet me on Twitter at Erndilio. I'm also on the Narrative Declaration server. I occasionally show up, but not very often. Gets a little a little hectic there. Also, I want you guys to take note from this episode. If you ever have guests in your home and they behave like all of these guys, don't. Thanks, so we have Speaker. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Speaker, and um, I, I am found at... Super Snake Kick. You can watch the show that I write called Hundreds of Parenting on Alpha Abuse's channel. And also, you can find my face behind George Washington on the American Quarter. And next up, we have Thurston Hillman. Uh, I mean, this was great fun. I had a ton of fun. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. Thank you again for filling up my villain points in this roleplay heavy session where I didn't have a lot of use for them. But trust me, next session, there's a map, so I'm probably going to have a lot of use for them. <laughs> okay, Smoke you can find weed. me on all the things at call GM. I tweet. I stream. I'll be on a panel over at twitch.tv slash official paizo tomorrow uh, talking about the um, Starfinder anniversary. Um, that's tomorrow at like, I don't know, 3 p.m. Central, I think it is. Anyways, because um, PaizoCon's going on right now, so I'm doing that. That's me. I love your faces. And I have been your host, Zoan the Bear. Obviously, this Twitch channel, you find me yelling at things, all that other fun stuff. And be sure to check us out over at narrativedeckversion.com if you enjoyed the show. If you want to, comp- when we roll natural ones and make us complicate, sadly, we didn't roll any ones today, which was really weird. We rolled, First session. We rolled all of them. No. Oh, all of them. Every other we episode. did roll a 20 at one point, though. Yeah, we only got a crit. But, uh, but when we do... If you guys want to help out with that, uh, the complication system is now live. So if you go to patreon.com forward slash narrative declaration, uh, we have a public post explaining how it is and how to do it, uh, along with uh, if you're on that tier, exactly how to submit it and all that other stuff. 
Uh, thank you, everybody, for telling everybody that we exist. Thank you all so much for supporting us. And we will see you all next time. So long and farewell. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.